It's gotta be my imagination. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. They not from around here. I think it's a new face. Who they? Who they? They not from around here. It's gotta be my imagination. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. Man, they not from around here. I think it's a new face. Greetings, Earthlings. I am Walt. Like there's no tomorrow Chris King K-G-N-O-O-B What homes you ain't know We're U-F-O Cargo khakis, polos, and fresh kicks That's the definition of what the cargo kids is S-O-S, yes, space style swagger I never do anything right I'm backwards, I'm so galactic So erratic, you niggas on my old swag You can have it the world is mine and your girl is too so do us a favor make room for the crew wow. who they who they they're not from around it's here. gotta be my imagination i think it's a new face i think it's a new face i think it's a new face they not from around here i think it's a new face who they who they they're not from around it's here. gotta be my imagination i think it's a new face i think it's a new So I'm not rushing, spaced out swag, best believe I'm paper touching, super stupid flow, and you bitches can't tell them nothing, UFO, uniquely flying, outstanding, all I speak is cash, I see why you don't understand, UFO, uniquely flying, outstanding, all I speak is cash, I see why you don't understand me, got a sense for drama, so I always keep the cannon, this is the invasion, so watch out for our landing, standing, Tall, never too far. Spring and summer fashion, bro. I get it in the fall. Y'all about to start hating, and I don't mind at all. I'm a thriller like MJ, and my flow is off the wall. Who they? Who they? They're not from around It's gotta be my imagination. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. They not from around here. I think it's a new face. Who they? Who they? I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. I think 
think it's a little face. Man, they not for real here. I think it's a little face. I need a haircut. <laughs> We're live, brother. Oh. <laughs> we don't have any barbers on the spaceship. No. Nope. Welcome back to the mothership. How you doing? This is the SS Who That. We are live once again. Uh, the baddest podcast this side of the of the Nile in the Mississippi River. I'm B. Hi, y'all. Uh, once again, we got the captain, the Mario. You know him as Paco, and this week we have two fantastic guests. We already even got into it. We already having great conversations, um, but we have Mr. Garland Brown, who is one of the most educated men I've ever met in my whole life. But he's a teacher down at uh, Columbia High School. He was my teacher um, when it came to criminal justice. A, a lot of people locally uh, know Mr. Brown, but I'm glad that he came. And we also have my friend. We just met today officially, but we've been on Facebook for the longest. He's a poet, he's an activist, community, community worker, um, mutual friend, uh, Europe Dooley, uh, always gives you big props and everything. So, But uh, Frank Frizzy Sykes, who is up right now for Poet of the Year um, for the SCA Awards. That's a blessing right there, man. That's appreciate, cool. Appreciate it. I'm glad that you could be here, man. Glad to be here. How your week been, Paco? Uh, it's been all right, man. Uh been catching up on a little little things. I I watch El Camino, the Breaking Bad joint. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, it um it's it's okay. Breaking Bad fans will love it, but uh I mean, to me as a feature film, it was just mediocre. I give, I give it 5 out of 10. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. All right, you saw it too? Mm, I heard uh, about. It. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a trailer pretty much like I mean, this I, is the trailer looked pretty good. But let me tell I'm you, not, I wasn't a big Breaking Bad guy. I felt it, like I'd be too behind. It had a lot of characters. That, you know, it brought a lot of characters back. But there Bill were, Burr? There, huh? Did Bill Burr make an appearance? No. Okay. Yeah. So I would have watched it. It. Um, I mean, it had its ups and downs, but it was a uh, it was a strong start with a weak finish to me. Ah. So, but like that. on the other side. I know everybody's watching El Camino, but I want to tell everybody to take a break from that and watch um, Raising Dion, Michael B. Jordan. That's, I've been seeing that a lot on my time. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's real good. So um, it's about uh, Michael B. Jordan's character's son who develops like superpowers, but he's mm. like six. Mm. So it's the mother struggling to raise a six-year-old with superpowers. And kind of figure out what's going on and stuff. But it's good, though. It's really well done. Wow. All right. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Didn't you see Joker? I went and saw Joker. How was it? I haven't seen it yet. It was fucking fantastic. Was it? Was it? Awesome. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. I loved it. I loved every second of it. And, like, the dark humor in it. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. And maybe just because black people, like to be talkative in movies but I'm always the only one like surprised like I, I feel like everybody else in the movie has already seen it right Cause, like when it's something funny nobody really like laughs anymore like right. it, everybody's like it's deadpan so it's real moments uh, to where it was like a dark humor, but it's you could tell it was intentional. It was funny, right, right. And I would be the only one laughing. I didn't know if I was like messed up on the inside or right, or if everybody else just saw saw it before I got there. I, I wasn't sure, but I was giggling my ass off, and nobody else seemed to find anything <laughs> funny about nobody it. Nobody else agreed. Wow, but, <laughs> but I loved it. It was yeah. great. I haven't checked it out yet. I've had my kids all week for fall break. And it's a really good commentary on, on like, the now. Right. Like they place it uh, in a day and age of, of old, but 
It the, still has a lot of relevance. The very first to the line you hear is like, there's a strike going on. Oh yeah, and that's okay. not giving away anything. It's just setting the premise of the environment. Right. Like, okay. So as soon as like the very first line, you're like, okay, I can identify with this. Right. 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 And then from there, it's a thrill ride. I heard it was very focused on mental health. Um. Yeah. But no, no, it wasn't like focused on like go get yourself checked to take care of your mental health. Right, it was just showing how this dude. What's the opposite of healthy? What's right. The, <laughs> what's all the wrong the, shit yeah, you the, can do? The lack of any mental right. anything like yeah. Right. The, the, so I, I can see where people might have been getting there from. That's the thing now that people are talking about a lot. So right. uh, the Joker, of course, I see why people pointed out. Mm -hmm. But if you see the movie, no, it's not like yeah, he just needed help. No. He's he's the Joker. He's, right. He, just, he got pushed too far. Right. right. I understand. Series yeah. of unfortunate events. Yeah. Because, yeah. because it's not like you see this man like decaying. You just see how the Joker got to the point where he just decided he was. He already was the man with the mind. Right. You just figure out like, oh, you found a gun. Okay. Right. <laughs> like, All right. This is yeah. good. Yeah. This is what's up. It's a really good. I, I really suggest everybody go get it and go watch it because the trailer doesn't even show. Like, it's not, like, I try to, like, figure out, of course. Movies right, figure out movies from the trailer, yeah. Completely got it off. Completely missed the mark. Right. <laughs> it was really good. Okay. All right, so uh, tell me about our guest. Who who wants oh. to go first today? Well, um, well, we was already talking and everything, but uh, my man, Frizzy, since you up for uh, Poet of the Year and everything, why don't you tell, tell everybody, you know, what you do, uh, how you got into it and all that, so we can make sure that, they go get their votes in. Is there a deadline on it? Or anything? Uh, actually, it's up into April of next year. So it's going. It's, they got oh. a while to vote because the actual uh, award show isn't until May twenty twenty. Okay. So, so okay. It's, it's it's early, but I'm I'm not wasting any time. I'm kicking it up. Yeah. I'm a spoken word artist poet here in Columbia, Tennessee. I operate a lot in Nashville, Tennessee, and I've traveled around to different states, hitting stages, yeah. uh, sending messages. Creatively, I use spoken word. Uh, Yes, to entertain, but more so to pack a message in there for people to hear mm. what needs to be heard, learn a lesson, and then take it and apply it to life. Right, uh, right. So with that stuff, I do a lot of things. You'll see me around town doing a lot of events. There's one event I just had last night at the, uh, uh, Columbia, Arts at Building. the Columbia Art Building, of yeah. course, with Mewtown Collective. I do that event, collaborate with him, and the event is called Change. Mm. Uh, and creatively, it's called Change for a reason, uh, to okay. kind of stir up things that need to not be the same as they have always been and create right. change like for the better. Um, like that. Especially and then, here. And yeah, it's especially here. It, it, we all the time uh, in Columbia, I hear a lot of people saying, there's nothing to do, there's nothing to do. But nobody does something so there can be something, something to do. To do. Right. So I just said, you know what? I said the same thing. There wasn't nothing to do. Why don't I just start bringing something to do and, and implement it and letting it be purposeful at the same time. Oh, so yeah. using my art, Using the people that I network with, Po Boys and Poets is another event that I actually started in, uh, doing in Nashville with a collectible poet. So I use so, them to bring them down here so that people can see other people from other walks of life doing right. the same thing and spreading that same message. So that's me in a nutshell. The stuff that I've kind of been through and done within my, my lifetime mm. uh, packed into a message to kind of send to those that are behind me and in front of me because it's a crazy right. truth. When they say it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, <laughs> it's some uh, stuff that they just have not learned or decided not to learn because right. they are so stuck. Program. Yeah, they're stuck in their way. So, greatly, that's what I do to, to shed true. that light and make things happen. Did you get a good turnout? Oh, yeah. We, it's always a good turnout. Even when it's not a good turnout, it's people that want to come. Yeah. You know when people start sending you messages saying, right. hey, I wanted to be there, but this happened, you know yeah. they're engaged into it. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's only time that's going to make it pop off. Is there going to be another one that you're doing uh, here locally? We, or I'll try to do one at least once a month. So, of course, that's this month's up. up. We'll go, we come back. What's this? November, we'll have another one. All right. Uh, and the date will be set for that to do. Just not set just yet. But, right. of course, it's always going to happen. If it don't happen in the same time. spot, I'm going to just put it into another venue and collaborate with other people to make it happen. Yeah. Through using what I do through Frisbee Productions, the marketing and, and making stuff happen so that everyone can actually businesses, artists, mm -hmm. uh can have that platform to take advantage of growth right 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 all right man that's pretty cool um i didn't hear about uh, about it until the, uh today shout out to jasmine armstrong uh but sounds like a great venture because i know columbia arts building is uh is trying to do some new things they just had the, the culture fest oh yeah so that's i think oh, yeah. that's a good partnership right there yeah they're definitely trying to to merge a lot of stuff together especially in this small town it's crazy yeah. how divided things really really are and then of course 
lack of education of certain stuff even keeps right. it that much more. So through right. the arts, you use that to kind of educate so that we can kind of work together to build exactly. and stop having this stagnant uh, yeah, mentality man. and not progressing. So Exactly. And if you guys are looking for uh, something to do, if you feel like there's just nothing going on here locally, you can come down to the Shut Up and Ink Tattoo Competition. <laughs> yes. <Shameless> plug. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> November 9th, we'll be at Revolution Inc. Make, make sure you mark your calendars because we don't have enough things to do. So we're trying to, you know, give people something to go out to and have some fun. Right. So I think we might have to get some poets involved with that, right? Yeah. Hey, if, hey, if you want, hey. I can block you off an hour. You can, can make it happen. You, you want to get some poets together to read for an hour? Okay, I can make it happen. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let's do that. Come That's on. Not... All right. Hold on. What up? What, what you? Oh. <laughs> yeah. hey, we got a soundboard here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for the for the air horn. Mm. So, um... <laughs> I mean, with, with your poetry, what is what is most you write? I've never heard anything by you, so for We're me and the audience, kind of so kinda like give us surprise. give us something that you, you know, give us some sort of genre, some sort of you know, how does your stuff flow? Where does it come from? Mine more come from consciousness. Uh, so the stuff that I spit, I, I spit it so that we can kind of have that wake up effect. Uh, mm -hmm. Because when you really do the things that I've done in my lifetime, and, and what kind of pushed me to doing it. Me being a deputy sheriff, foreman, deputy sheriff, I've seen in a lot of different environments right. uh, that kind of gets you out of the box that you're in uh, and you get to see the world differently from everybody's point of view. Right. Uh, so when I seen it, it made me wake up. It made mm -hmm. me stop being so stuck in my mindset saying, everybody don't think like me. Right. That's other factors and other things that are going on. So actually when I, when I spit, I'll spit stories. And I'll tell the story creatively so that you can kind of see it from another person's point of view. Yeah. And then bring it back to yourself so you can really, you know, examine yourself and your right. own thoughts. So they can kind of release what needs to happen to create that change. So That's beautiful. Okay. That's just, can we hear something before the end of the show? Not right oh, now. But, of course, but of course. But of course. Cool. Cool. I'm a poet, too, so I might, I might do a little That's bit. That's what's up. We'll make it happen. That's what's up. Mr. Brown. Man. I, I don't even know where I want to start because I just I got a bunch of questions. <laughs> but first off, if anybody doesn't know, Mr. Brown is the <laughs> truth. I just all right. I want to start off with a, with a story. Okay, so Mr. Brown used to have me so confident that I just knew what the hell like that because <laughs> he would you know, he would make sure that you like. I don't know if you still have to give the uh, the same test, but you used to have like that that big end of the year uh, paper quiz and mm -hmm. everything. All right, so. He's drilling us and making sure that we that we got it. We getting tested, pop quizzes, all that type of stuff mm -hmm. about you know criminal justice, your rights, new, uh, dealing with officers, with all that type of stuff. So I'm in the mall, and <laughs> and this cop called me over. I jumped over a chair, mm -hmm. so and this, uh, it was the the mall security, but then it was like a state trooper. He called me over, and uh, and he was like, "Why'd you jump over that chair?" I like I just felt like doing it, man. He like, well, "What's your name?" And my young, smart ass, straight out of criminal justice thing, I'm like, I know how to handle this perfectly. I was like, I'm like, is there an ongoing investigation on why you need to, on why you need to get my name? I just made it 100 times harder, and I got back to school, and I told Mr. Brown, like, I don't know who went wrong. Like, I told him, like, I told him, like, that he, he didn't need my name. Like, it was my, I didn't have to give him that. It was my right. Mr. Brown was like, it's not. What you say is nah, how you say it. Like, he was like, even if you were right, you said it like, like just. And he knows me too well. So he was like, I know how you said it. Like, you handled it all wrong. Like, <laughs> he knew off the rip. Off the rip. Yeah, yeah, off the rip. Yeah, yeah. But Mr. Brown has always been like a somebody that's, that's been there to guide me and everything. And and I'm just all right. My first question I want to ask, very first thing. Is it Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day? Because it's tomorrow. That was the first thing. I call heard. call it by his name. Call it Columbus Day. Call it Columbus Day. Um, and and the reason why I'm gonna tell you something. I I gave a speech, uh, to the uh, uh, Rotary back in the summer. And a gentleman asked me a question. He said, "Do you advocate or back the removing of these statues?" Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, "No." And he said, well, well, what's the rationale, man? I, I said, I want, want to know who don't like me. Yeah. Right. I right. want to have, a, have a, uh, a landmark where not to go. So you know the history. Uh, you can't change history. Right. Now, you can change the future. 
Right. But you can't change history. Uh, Columbus was who he was. You're not going to ever change that. You can change the name of the day, but what happened still exists. Right. Right. So call it Columbus Day and then teach why we don't want to call that or mm. what he has done or what like, really? happened from his mm. dis- what so-called discovery. Yeah. See, that's one of the things I was always upset with when I was a young kid because I was thinking, I was like, hey, you're going to discover something that people are already here. That right. confused You know, me. I was sitting there, yeah. I was at to nine, ten years old listening to that, and I knew it was it was phony then. And, uh, but the, the wording on how they always use it when it, when it's taught mm-hmm. and everything. How you feel about how, how Christopher Columbus is portrayed in the teaching of, you know what I'm saying? He it, he discovered it. It's still like the, well, it's, the phrase. The history is, is written by the winners. It's called yeah. his story. Yeah. Yep. So right. he is gonna tell his story You're a certain right. type of way, but you've got to tell your story. Right. It's just like Alex Haley writing Roots. Right. Alex Haley had been dead for almost thirty years, and he's still catching flat. Oh, he plagiarized. Mm-hmm. He didn't write that. He was. Uh, but why are you saying that? How do you know what stories was told in his family? You're saying that because it reveals something about your. History mm. and the fact that you didn't teach it right. I've got my history. Right. You got your history. You got your history. You got your history because we all right. come from different backgrounds and situations. Right. Now it was doing a certain historical context, sure. Yeah. But yeah. we all got our own history. So when I'm telling you and telling anybody else, people want to change the name. I'll leave the name up there. Right. So we are know the person. Wow. That's a that's a, a like what you were just saying about perspectives. Like that's a, a hell of a perspective to take on it. And then right. and then when that day comes around, just just let, just tell the truth about it. Right. Just tell right. the truth right. about it. And it's easier. I, I respect I respect <laughs> folk. I respect the young people. And, and shout out to my man over at Frank because you guys come from a generation. You know, I see the the labor, the fruits of my labor when I see y'all. Right. Right. Uh, a lot of stuff you guys are doing and you're trying to work. You know, I was kind of upset about and depressed at one point in time but I was like you know we didn't work hard enough to do certain things now I see you Same. guys are carrying this stuff on so right, it yeah. makes me proud to know that I came back here to do a little bit of something Right. Yeah. so y'all keep doing what you're doing but back on to what you were saying I, I'm I'm real proud of the younger it's a group of, of young people that. that are coming through that say hey we ain't sitting back no more letting this stuff fly right, right. demanding things they demand this stuff to go right. on so I'm I'm cool with that but at the same time you got to know where to focus your energy True. you know because if you don't if you thing. if you burn a laser too long you're going to burn it out right right right, right. All right? Yeah. so when you going up to the Capitol Hill the, the kids was up and I, and I have much praise for that brother he was going up there and they were sitting in and doing all the other stuff at, at the Capitol about Nathan Bedford Forrest. Mm-hmm. You can remove Nathan Bedford Forrest from the Capitol, move his bus somewhere. Hey, up, you go to Mount Pleasant, it's a statue up down there for him. Mm-hmm. All over the South. Pulaski, go to Chapel Hill, up there where he's from. Yep. They got his house opened up in Chapel Hill. See, a lot of people don't know that Joker lived over in Chapel Hill. Yeah, I didn't even know. All right, that. that's know. the reason why Forest High School is named after him. Well, if you're gonna mm-hmm. do that, go over to go over to MTSU. MTSU, the Blue Raider, is the uh, name of their football the team. team. Yeah. The who was the Blue Raider? Nathan Bedford Forest. They used to have a man a long time ago on a horse with a gray uniform, yeah. riding up and down, the head blue around the thing, riding up and down the field. Yeah. That was the Blue Raider. Now, that being said, that's cool. I'm cool with that. I'm down with you if you want to go there. I didn't go there. I went to Tennessee State. I stayed you, cause you home. Because you know right. we're not the... Because I wasn't going to do that. Now, right. if that's what you want to do, you go on over and be there. But when you go over there... Don't be surprised. Black BYU football player. Yeah. Oh, it's, they was praising that last night. Oh, he's the first black court, football quarterback at BYU. Why? Why would you go to school there? Then yeah. people think we got tails. Yeah, yeah. Okay, why would you go there? Why would you go play for the University of Alabama and the University of Alabama football, athletic team, football, basketball, athletic teams, 70% African American. But then they student body is like 5% African American. Right. Uh, Okay? Why would you do that? Why would you go to a school that the man stood in the doorway and wouldn't let you in there? 
Right. What they say, run, nigga, run. Yeah, yeah man, this is deep stuff, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, but and, true. and folk get mad at me for saying that. And I, I tell but it's I was, history. I was like, I would never do that. Oh, I can't play. I, I'm going to the NFL. You can go to the NFL from any school. You can. Tennessee State had, in 1974, TSU had four of the top 34 picks in the NFL draft, including the number one pick and the number four pick. So if you can play, you're going to play anywhere. Now, that's not being that. Once you go there, and once you get involved in those things, see, what our folks forget, and I forget sometimes, mm-hmm. but what we forget, right. we can't never forget this, is you black. Yeah. I don't care yeah. how much bleach water you get into. You black. You're going to be black. You're yes. going to be black forever. Yes. When I go to work at my various jobs, I got to remember I'm black. I'm black now, you got a lot of people that's going to, you got white people that's going to be cool with you. But and since, there's some white people that's down with you and they gonna yeah, help you. Right. But at the same time, the way the society of the of the, the structure is set up, man, they society still, is powerful. Yeah. And they condemn them. Yeah. I mean, they will get on their own people. Oh yeah. It's oh yeah. Deep. This mm-hmm. is a deep thing. This it's is deep. real deep. But and those that forget that they black are sorely reminded. Very quickly. You gonna yes. remember that real quick. That's what yeah. happened to Bill Cobb. Yeah. I mean, Man. you it don't make no difference how much money you got. If they really want to get you, they're going to get you. Gonna right. get you. And that's one of the philosophies that we had a long time ago because we, we did a whole bunch of stuff around here in, in trying to, to break way for y'all to be able yeah. to do some stuff that y'all did. A lot of y'all don't know about the bomb threats that we got at, at, at Central for doing black history plays, uh, being called when we had Elevate Your Mind being called a black Ku Klux Klan. Mm. See, a lot of y'all don't know some of the things that we don't had to go through. No. Nah. Being ostracized by a bomb threat by because teachers. it was a black man. Movie. We had a bomb threat one night, man. They 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 were getting ready to clear the school and they went through and checked everything and everything was cool. So we and and if somebody's gonna really blow you up, they're not gonna call no, you. Nah, they're gonna, they're gonna blow, blow you up. Gonna blow you up. Especially you know, nowadays. Right. I mean yeah. back then too. They're yeah. not gonna call, oh hey y'all, y'all need to watch out. Y'all got a bomb out there. We're gonna get y'all in fifteen minutes. Ain't nobody gonna do that. <laughs> right, right. So, right. you know, we we went through with a lot of that stuff and but we did those things so you guys come out there and have some, but I know I'm black. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's just a matter of time. They done already got me twice. All right. They they will do mean? stuff to you. Oh, they put stumbling blocks up. Oh, they oh, mess you road up. Roadblocks, yeah. Uh, well, a lot of people don't know what they did. Dr. King, you know, black people, the saddest thing that I can say about our people is we don't know what Dr. King went through. And people disrespect them. The, bro, the, the, I call them the hotels. The hotels uh. disrespect Dr. King you don't just because you love Malcolm don't mean you have to hate Dr. King. Right. It's love for both of them bro. They right. was different sides of the same coin. Right, right, right. All right. It wasn't like they were fighting against each other. One thing people don't know, they messed Dr. King's credit up. They I they had no cre- they Did went you know you, when when you hear yeah, about yeah, identities, yeah. identity theft, they were going in Dr. King's trash. <laughs> and they got his uh credit card. No. Right. They ran credit up on him, man. Master's credit up. Yeah, they ran credit on him. Dr. King couldn't get a life insurance policy. <laughs> I didn't know that at all. They, he couldn't, man. They Wait, was he didn't to have get, any life insurance when they... Dude, if it weren't for Harry Belafonte and Sammy Davis Jr. And them, man, that man, let me tell you something. Harry Belafonte, un, unsung hero, man, in history. Yeah. Harry Belafonte, Sammy Davis Jr. Oh. Dick Gregory. I love Dick Gregory. Them, I cats, know about Dick. them cats would yeah. do concerts and do shows, take the benefit from it, and Dick feed Gregory. Dr. King family. Right. Mm. They paid his bills. Mm. Okay? See, a lot of people don't know that. No. Nah, they know. took care of that man. They buried him. Yeah. They buried him. That's how they... And see, everybody think about Dr. King. Dr. King didn't have a job. No. Dr. King, and if you ever see... Uh, Selma, it's a part in that Dr. King wife was kind of halfway chippy in that movie. Mm. And the reason why she was chippy was because Dr. King got $400,000 for winning the Nobel Peace Prize. Took all of it, donated back to the movement. He didn't take a dime of that money, man. Uh. 
See, a lot of people don't know that. So yeah. when folks start disrespecting, that man didn't have to do what he did. At all, Not bro. At all. Especially taking the four hundred grand and putting it back in. Okay, right. I'm, I'm already look, doing the work. All right. Go and look <laughs> at a documentary called King in the Wilderness. King in the Wilderness. I got Wilderness. it. I bought it. I got it. I showed it to my kids. Tears came down out of my eyes. King in because the Wilderness. Because when you first see it, when it first come on, it tells a story. Doctor King's Secretary helper mm -hmm. coming to pick him up on April 3rd, 1968. The day before. And said his kids was holding on to a little daddy, please don't go. Stay with us. Stay with us here. He said, What y'all doing? Like, what y'all acting like this for? Please, Dad, don't go. Don't go. We want you to stay here with us. Mm. He said, I'll be back on Sunday. And said, When he got in the car, they jumped on the car, jumped on the hood of the car. Daddy, please don't go. Please don't go. Oh man! And he said, "I don't know what's wrong with these kids. They ain't never act like this before." The kids knew something was gonna happen to their dad. Yeah, that's why. See, yeah. he didn't have to get in that car. No, he had to do none of that. He didn't For have real. to. He didn't have to do that. And my um, my great grandma, uh, Madea, she's my whole family from Montgomery. Yeah, mm -hmm. but she uh, lived right around the corner from. The church that he was he was uh, preaching at while they was doing the boycott, you know. So every Sunday, have you ever been down there to the church? I haven't. I, well, they said I used to go a lot when I was little, but I don't remember. Went there this summer. Yeah, you know where that church is. She stayed is? right around the corner. You know where that church is? No, Montgomery. You could blow and hit the Capitol building. Mm. George Wallace was right there. I mean, I was like, I thought it was at least a little bit further down. Mm -mm. No, no, no. It's Church sit right here. The edge of that street was a Capitol building. Okay? If you know anything <laughs> oh, you about Nashville, your, you, you know what Capitol right Hill, there. Nashville is? Yeah. yeah. Baptist Church first at Capitol Hill? Yeah. It's almost the same situation. A little black church sitting right down the hill from the Capitol building. Right. This man right. raiding all kinds of hell down there. You hear me? He, I mean, right there I mean, in the right in there. Hey, I got mad That's respect serious. for them folk down in Alabama, man. Oh, yeah. I, I really do because... The folks that did it. I ain't talking about the ones that sat on the sideline. No, the ones that did it. I'm talking about the people that did it. <laughs> yeah, right. it took three years, didn't it? Nah, about a year. About a year? A little bit of a year, yeah. But I'm talking about not only with Birmingham, I mean with uh, Montgomery. We, we went on a civil rights tour this summer. Mm -hmm. And we went through Alabama. And then ended at the civil rights, I mean the EGI, the Equal Justice Institute. Okay. Go that if you go to Montgomery, you gotta go there because that's where they got the lynching memorial. Okay, you can bring that lynching memorial back, and they want you. They got one hanging, and they got one down on the ground, and they want you to get a, a committee together and get a group of people together. And that's why I didn't know when I first went, but that was the purpose of us going because we had the leadership of Murray County on that bus with us, black the, and white, the lynching to memorial. bring that lynching memorial back. And we're going to try to bring that lynching memorial back. What is a lynching memorial? What is it? It's got yeah. the names of the men that were lynched. Mm. And actually, to be totally honest with you, some more names that need to be up there on that list. How, how it's about the list? five names on there. The last person that officially got lynched in Murray County was a guy by the name of Cordy Cheek. And oh, Cordy oh, they Cheek, have it specifically Murray County. They have the... Dude, it, they got... It's one inside the memorial, the actual oh, no. museum. They mm. have dirt from the sites in a in a jar, and it's got the name of the person and the date that they got lynched. And then at the site oh. is a hanging music, it's a hanging memorial, and it, it's literally a block of iron that's hanging, just like a ceiling fans hanging. But yeah. It's a block, and it's got the county, the state, and the names of the people who were lynched. See, and we have five of them from Murray County. It's five of them. You have, and, and it's more than, it's actually more than that. You right. have several people who were lynched in Murray County. Uh, it's probably about 12, 15 men that got lynched. And I'm talking about post-slavery. Mm. From from 1870s, uh, at the end of Reconstruction, I'm going to mm -hmm. say 1872. Mm -hmm. From 1872 to 1933, it's about 15 men that we know that got lynched. Yeah, lyn lynching right. was legal until the 60s. Oh, it, was, it wasn't, no, yeah. It was very easy for you to get in. And yes, out of here, yeah. in this in this yeah. area right here, when you go down the road a little bit on the other side, you're going to go to Williamsport. Mm -hmm. Okay? Dude, 
it was a kid who got off train down there to go see his granddaddy. He came from West Tennessee. Mm-hmm. His name was Wilson. They don't never talk about this one. Guy got off the train down there to go see his granddaddy. Somewhere in this time frame, a girl down there, a 14 year old girl, was sexually assaulted. She didn't see the guy who did. The guy knocked her down and did whatever he was going to do to this this kid. Right. Well, the, the they came out and said, well, who's, who's down there? Well, they, they took the dogs out and everything. Well, come to find out, Mr. Wilson's grandson was down there visiting his granddad. The guy was about 17, 18 years old. Yeah. Arrested him. Brought him back to Columbia. Put, and had a, And back then, you could get arrested. And they had your trial later on that day. Man, okay. Immediately. Immediately. And they had a jury and everything set up. Well, they had this trial. The girl comes in there. And the girl's mom. White girl. White woman. This is not. This is Mr. Wilson's grandson. He didn't rape her. He didn't do this to me. He didn't hurt me. They already knew him. They, they knew, knew him. him. They knew it. They seen him going to man's house. When the girl was going the other way, when she got attacked. Oh. This is not the kid that did this. Then the next thing you know. The jury, after he and her say that, the jury found him guilty. guilty. Well, the judge said, I'm throwing out the jury's verdict, and I'm ruling him not guilty, and you need to go. Mm -hmm. Guy was getting ready to leave. The girl's dad stands up in the courthouse, shoot him and kill him up in the middle of the courthouse. Oh, wow. Wow. Golly. (laughs) And the dad got off? They had his trial. He, they found him not guilty. See, it's I knew. Very, I knew. I, I see, you got to understand something. Let me, let me also tell you this right here. In the history of the United States, a white man who was arrested or accused of harming, hurting, killing a black person, that didn't get to be a thing where they were going to jail up until recently. Like seven. And I'm talking 80. about mm-hmm. with the Birmingham church bombing in 1970. Oh yeah. Okay. That it was took just them in 14, the 70s? It took them fourteen years to arrest somebody for that. Wait, that 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 was just in the seventies. That bombing took place six weeks before Dr. King got killed. I mean, uh, JFK get, gets killed. Mm. Okay, so it's connections between that b- bombing and JFK getting killed too. All I right. Know that. It's some connection in there, yeah, and some connections in there with Dr. King getting killed. Okay. With the JFK, like LinkedIn. And with the Birmingham bombing, yeah. This is you had a group of racists, man. It was no joke, yeah. and they still in operation right now. Oh yeah. Okay, they still in operation yeah. right now, and they got away with some stuff. One of those cats was on the corner when JFK drove down. He drove JFK drove down Commerce, turned on to Houston. Dude mm-hmm. standing on the corner, Houston and Elm Street. JFK gets killed on Elm, standing there looking. The whole time, just and he yeah, just too calm. Okay, now the Friday before. JFK goes to uh, Dallas. Yeah. He down in Miami tells his friend down there and say, hey, you ain't going to see your boy in JFK in Miami no more. Told him. This dude right here, the same guy, his best friend recorded him. All right? So his best friend is is a snitch for the police. Mm-hmm. But he's recording. Said, uh, and, he, and he said, Thank yeah, I said, what up? Whatever, I said, well, if he gets killed, we're going to have to know where we are. He said, don't worry about it. They're going to pick up somebody after so we'll just throw everybody off. He knew the whole plot. I said, what, how you think they're going to do it then? They're going to kill him from an office building with a high-powered rifle. Okay? So he knew the whole plot. And listen to this. Same dude, Willie Somerset. Same guy. Willis called Somerset. Hit the same detective he was snitching to. Yeah. April 3rd, 1968. Said, look here, I'm in Memphis. You got to get me up out of here now because they're going to kill Martin Luther King tomorrow and I don't want to be around and take the fall for it. Oh, shit. Willie Somerset. That I look at. Googling. Yo, I'm glad you mentioned the, uh, the word snitch. It made me think of some stuff. Right. <laughs> uh <Uh-oh. So. laughs> Here we go. Here it is. Snitch Talk 101. <laughs> you know, I want, I want, I want brother's uh, opinion on this because you used to be a, a law enforcement officer. Right. And all right, I, locally, it's just a question that I have locally. Is is the portion of like of of arrest made? Does it come from good investigative police work, or does it just come from the majority of like people telling each other? Like, if you had to like think about people actually arrest 
that lead to, to prison time, that lead to jail time, lead to convictions? Does it come from the investigative work that goes into it or just somebody else got got messed up and that's how complicated this thing really is right there yeah. um <laughs> what seems to be what's happening ain't what's happening <laughs> uh let me put it like this and uh, and i'm not gonna include names or anything like that but i'll oh. tell you one one of the responsibilities of the things that i did uh when i worked there right. that back hallway was where the judge is basically uh, wrong. Okay. I've taken incarcerated to the back hallway, mm. if I could tell you that. Uh, and I don't take them back there Just for there. coffee and, and cookies type right, stuff. Right, right. Uh, even with me doing that, there's there were deeper things that were happening behind my eyes that mm. I was not allowed to see. Right. Uh, Above so, your pay grade? I, I, yeah, I would yeah. say above my pay grade. <laughs> right. Uh, but it wasn't, I mean, if you if you just pay attention, you see it. You understand right. it. You can connect. Right. Why is this happening? Okay, I see what y'all trying to do. Lines. So I would know what they were trying to do. That yeah. pressure that they put on someone and say, hey, if you give me this, we'll do this type of right. thing. So that happens. Uh, but also, while that's happening, the other thing is happening. Some of these people that I'm taking back there already work with them. Mm. <laughs> mm. So... Uh, mm. and for the longest, even when I was still there, I would tell a lot of people, I said, hey, man, that game, it's over. Hang up. Drug game, whatever game, you hang it up. If you think technology is where it is now and that they ain't got a clue, they're allowing technology to be here. Right. They've already been advanced past this right. to have used it and to set you up even, it's over. Mm -hmm. So even when you're not trying to be a snitch, they got you a they, snitch, right? <laughs> exactly. Snitch, oh. Snitching on yourself, exactly. Yeah. So oh. it, it, it's that deep that it's people deep. <laughs> you don't pay attention to the stuff you do that will hang yourself up, and all it takes for them to say, "Okay, I got them." So now we're gonna see how much you, we can get out of them, right? Because now that we got you, we gonna put this over your head, and now it's just. A, I I sat in the right. courtroom and I, I I brought a guy out, Hispanic guy, from Mexico. Right. They tracked him from Mexico. Knew where he was coming, knew what car he was in, mm -hmm. knew the tag, knew what to be looking for. Let him come. Let him come. Yep. Through Florida, to Georgia, up into Tennessee. Boom. Knew he was going to be at this area at this time. Creatively, because you can't, Constitution right, they can't just pull you off for no reason, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody right. know that. They got to have a, a, a reason, reason for stopping. Yeah. <laughs> the reason they pulled him over was he was telling the car in front of him too close. Ah, <laughs> what he don't understand is that the car in front of him was them. Yes, <laughs> oh, right. Slow down, pull them over, find what we got to get, take them on out of here. Yep. The yeah. game is over, man. Right. But you don't, they don't even come out in court. Mm -hmm. They don't say we was the car in front of them. No one's smart enough to ask that question. They just shit. You set up for the okie doke. <laughs> right. You set up that you don't even know you set up. And I try and tell people that too. I'm trying to tell them, I'm like, man, this technology and that dope game is over. It's done. It's over. You want to be in a dope game, move to Colorado if, and grow some weed. If they so, have not got right. you yet, it's because they want you sitting out there. Right. You, yeah. you are feeding them information enough too long. Let me tell you, when they, when they did that big roundup in Mount Pleasant and all that stuff, I was... <laughs> I was doing video work for like eight people. Yeah. So I know damn well my name had to come across something <laughs> at some point. Oh, right. easily. Or you know what easily. I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. like And you have video. Yes. And well, that, I mean I've never surrendered no video to nobody. No, I'm saying, but you know what thinking, though? Like, you know what though? I have been contacted through email before asking if I wanted to sell my videotapes. And I even contacted the person that the tapes was on and was like Hey, look, somebody contacted me asking about selling your footage. They told me, they said, offer them five grand and see if they take it. I said, all right. Offer them five grand, they can have it. They said, how about, you know, 200? I'm like, no, mm -hmm. no. You mm -hmm. know, I would never, me, I would never sell my clients out like that. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? They have to buy the DVD. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to buy the DVD to get information. You got to see the edited version. Right. Let me, mm -hmm. let me, let me say something that, that Mr. Frizz already didn't say. I'm going to tell you something I learned a long time ago. 
I, I've seen a whole lot. I've been around a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tell people, I, I t- told a story. I saw a million dollars one time in the trunk of a car in Fabio Park. Okay. Oh, wow. oh. All right, now I'm done letting oh. you know. Now I ain't going to tell you who it was. Right. Oh, goodness. I come from old school. Now, I caught a lot of flack from people when I was working at the courthouse. You snitching, you snitching. And I was like, how am I snitching when I ain't even out there with y'all? Right. I ain't got nothing to tell. All right. How am I snitching? Okay, well, you believe what you want to because it ain't no amounts of convincing somebody. No, nah, once somebody got their mind made once up. Once they got their mind made up and see, a lot of time, yo, what, what a lot of people don't understand is, is your enemies will deceive you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing Shakespeare said. I love Shakespeare. He said, there is no honor amongst thieves. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. So, if somebody, charge that to the if game. somebody is willing to serve their mama or serve their sister or serve their family, they on the street, you. they a villain. Mm-hmm. They not gonna help you. No. And and if you selling with them, it's dog eat dog. This is yep. this is do or die, man. On the street, you ain't got no friends. Right. And that's it. If you want to listen yeah. to anything, it's a DVD I got at school. It's American Gangster, the first series. I got the, whole, first, the first season. The first. I still season. got it too. That whole first season. Go back on that mm-hmm. DVD tonight and look Everybody on told. the bonus features. When they pull in uh, the dude that used to be on the wire, I think his name is Melvin Williams. Yep. All right? Mm-hmm. When they pull him in there, he said something. This is a championship Hall of Fame dope man. Yeah. If this is such a thing as a Hall of Fame for He's dope definitely man, in it. he got to be a first ballot, first time <laughs> person. You getting in. All right? Yes. He said something. He said, if any of y'all out there thinking about doing this, he said, I got something to tell you. They arrested all of us. And, and they're going to get you to. Yeah, because when we smarter than Okay. Them. And these dudes that, that they had on American Gangster. The geniuses. Them folks right there was legitimate. The first people to do this. They wrote the book. They huh? wrote the book on it. So when you out there, it's Frank just, Lucas, he go, <laughs> he went to the dog on Gold Triangle. You hear what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Right. I, he got the means and the resource. Well, he didn't tell his full story either because. If you truth be told, he was flying it back on on the doggone soldiers' planes. They dead on it, so you know that that man knew what he had on it. Right. So why was he letting? Why did they let Melvin and Frank and all these people live when right. they killed Martin Luther King? Right. Because that's all I got to say. All if you want to know anything about that, that all of that was going on at the same time. Wow, that makes so much sense. All of that was going on at the same Bro. time, dude. Bro, what he just said, bro. Oh. They killed Martin Luther King, shot Martin Luther King, a preacher. Malcolm X. In the neck, in the Fred mouth, Hampton. shot and blew his jaw off. Yeah. This man had three kids, four kids, man, and a wife, and they killed him like they killed him like a dog. And they let these people live. These people killed our whole community, man. Oh, uh, bro. You know, we make so we make heroes out of people we so, should be making villains out of. And you know what? I I talk to Brandon <laughs> about this all the time. He he kind of gets mad when I tell him this. But I tell Depends, him, us as say? a culture, we have got to stop glorifying the dope man. Got to. Our culture has been destroyed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our culture has been hijacked and criminalized. And, dude, I'm telling you, I read. <laughs> I can't. I can't let y'all know all my secrets. <laughs> okay. Right? No. I can't let y'all know because <laughs> back when I was about 30, back when I started going into some of the stuff that I'm talking to y'all about tonight and started to understand and research and study what was done to us. Right. Oh, man. It's, oh, man. And I, had it's to so break my, I had to break man. myself away from that. Man, okay? hey, I had I'm to break addicted. myself away from I it. can't stop. That's well, all. I don't play video games. I don't watch sports. That's all okay, I do. Okay, but see, all that's the day. thing. This is, this, you on, you, where I used to be, but I'm telling you, yep. I'm gonna tell you something. When you go research all of this, my grandmama, who was ninth grade educated woman, was blue collar worker. She told me something one time. When when I was getting about 13, 14, 15 years old, and I was hanging around these people, she told me something. She said, "I'm gonna tell you one thing." She worked at the hospital. My grandmother was a mulatto. She was half a tag. Mm. So when you saw her, you couldn't tell who she was. That's what my father was. He okay. looked like Smokey Robinson. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so she she got in access into some places where she wouldn't have normally been. Right, right. She was on the elevator with some doctors. And the doctors were having a conversation about integration. Hmm. And said, well, you know we got to integrate this hospital. And he said, well, we're going to do something 
to make it to where they ain't gonna never want to be with us. That makes so much sense. My grandma said about two weeks later she saw weed. Now she said she ain't saying that them men did that. Hmm. But she said it was mighty funny and she always correlated that. She said it was two weeks later all of a sudden these kids were smoking marijuana. Mm. Black kids. My uncle was one of them. Mm. Okay? She said he she could come home and smell something funny. She thought the dog done peed now. This is what it showed us smoking weed. <laughs> you feel me? Now, I understand that some people out there want to do that. And I ain't, I'm I'm gonna hold my you know Can displeasure I? with that for a while and let you know. But at the same time, we were integrating. Mm-hmm. They was trying to mess our mind up. Yeah. So if you go watch Bastards of the Party. Yes. Which is one of the greatest documentaries ever made. Okay? Please for black people. My man has a vignette going from the 60s to the 70s. He had Superfly on there. Mm-hmm. He had my man, he said, he had, he said, oh, we ain't about that no more, brother. We on the street. We finna do what we gonna do. That movie, Black Exploitation, love my Black Exploitation movies. Now, yes. I love them jokers now. I, don't get me wrong. Okay. However, <laughs> If you ain't got good common sense, or if you caught that at the right time in your upbringing, yeah. you're going to catch hold of that. That's going to get you. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. My man said something in the movie. He said, what was the result of that movie? He said, there's a whole lot of people out there in Inglewood Cemetery yeah. dead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember that part? Let, let me jump in here real quick. Kind of <laughs> right. to go along present day version of what you're talking about. We were just talking about this earlier. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he was he was asking me, you know, what is what is causing all these people with this heroin now and mm-hmm. stuff like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. You know, let's let's back up let's say four years ago, five years ago, mm-hmm. we had the opiate pill crisis mm-hmm. here where everybody was on them pills and everybody was getting, they was going to Chapel Hill, getting them pills from them doctors and they was getting all them opiates, okay? Hornwall. Yeah, they was going all this out. And then all of a sudden, all that shit dried up mm-hmm. and heroin appeared. Mm-hmm. Heroin was here after that, mm-hmm. you know? I ain't I, never seen heroin. Here. 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 I'm talking about, I saw crack. Yeah. yeah, I saw cocaine. Yeah. I saw it on school bus. Crack country. The first drug dealers in town, I knew them cats very well. Crack country. You know, yeah. but yeah. didn't see no heroin. Yeah. Now yeah. Frank, Frank was in my class doing that time. What I tell y'all, Frank? Long time ago, didn't I tell y'all? I said that all the folks smoking weed now. By the time y'all get ready to get grown, they're gonna be doing heroin, yeah. uh, cocaine and stuff. They gonna right. go something high. Gateway see, nobody believe that. Hmm. See, you got a whole lot. It's some psychological things going oh, on, man. Yeah. Y'all, we living in a time <laughs> that you ain't got no money. I'm working two jobs. Right, yeah. right. True. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got these cats up here, GM, time out, GM workers, all of y'all up here, solidarity to you. And I'm going to tell you something. Y'all are fighting for everybody. Yeah, come on now. Yeah. I see okay, you, you ain't just fighting up there for that. you, you fighting for me. Okay, you fighting for all the blue collar people, right? And a lot of folk don't understand that. Okay, I don't understand don't. It because of, we getting pimped. All right, we having to go work. <laughs> right. So when you look in the situation that you in, you twenty years old, you twenty five years old, and your life ain't nothing. Right. Like you perceiving it that way. Cause see, when you watch TV, they don't show you suffering on TV. Right. Look at. Let's take it's black. All let's lit, take, turn right, up. Let's everybody. take black entertainment for a minute, and we go back into what I was saying earlier with your super flying in. At least super fly in the black exploitation movie still has some reality based stuff. You were seeing America, black America, as it was. Poverty. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You yeah, wasn't poverty. seeing it as some fantasy like you looking at on own network, yeah. on Empire. on Empire. Where you everybody some some superstar rapper or whatever the year. I've, I've been around a long time, dude. I, I know maybe a handful of people that made it right. in the rap game. Right. Dude, I'm talking 40 years old, talking about you got a mixtape coming out next week. <laughs> dude. <laughs> I mean, I'm dude, I mean, right. seriously, yeah. whatever you got going on, I'm I, I do your thing. Do but what you gonna do. Realistic. Okay, don't don't give up on what you're doing. However, at a certain time, in realistic. a certain sp- spot, I knew when I when I got married, I got married at 25. Now, me and my wife started dating at 20. All right? Mm. Now, I love my wife. 
I, me and my wife had a conversation on our first date. All right. That's the, she gonna be she gonna be there. Yeah. I didn't know that then. Right, right. She knew. Uh. My grandmama knew. <laughs> Both of them. All right. People, all the folks seen it and saw. When you get a certain age, the, that book said, Frank, when I was a child, I thought as a child, yeah. but when I became a man, you put away childish things. Right. Well, that's kind of like what when. And not the interruption, yeah. but when you bring up uh, our culture and everything, that's kind of like what I'm be trying to get to. In my eyes, with a culture that pretty much is the highest influence in the whole world, it, we're, we've only been free 55 years. <laughs> Well, you ain't free now. I, I chuckle, yeah. That's why I chuckle. You ain't free now. <laughs> but I'm saying. But, but I, you we don't you know what understand you what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You, you get what I mean? Like, yeah. like integrated, able to vote that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So our culture is young. Yeah. And then once you really get into what has been done, when it, in, the, in between the right to vote and now, you've had the Iran-Contra scandal. You've had syphilis in Tuskegee. You know what I'm saying? You've. It's always been something mm. in, in, in the midst of you had the Black Panther Party and, and all those assassinations and all that. Uh, so I feel like I give I give us more credit, I think. Mm. I feel like if you if you really look at it, you take a step back and look at timeline wise, the impact that we have and the impact and things that have been done to us in such a short, short amount of years, what do you Expect, but, you know what but here's the thing: it's every equal year, parts, you know what I mean, you ain't every year that passes, the gap expands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we gonna have to play double time catch up. We ain't got time to be out here fucking with this heroin yeah. falling we, back. We, we catch. That's up why. Now. That's why when you say when you hear older folks say, "Oh, they set us back two years. Them two years is crucial." You know what I mean? They set us back ten years. Uh, one ten day years is crucial, crucial because that gap every yeah. year that that passes, that gap jumps. It's getting to the point that the gap <laughs> jumps. It's jumping for white folks. They falling back this from the rich to one percent. And that's see, that's what, scary. That's, that's what I told some kids, man. I I had a group of kids in my class, the white kids, and they were vibing. And I was talking to them cats, and I said, "It's scary to me to see what's going on in white America right yeah. now." Because if they hit, they hit, a, they dropped a crack bomb on us thirty years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm seeing what what happened in our neighborhood. You know, y'all yeah. never have seen East Hill when East Hill was real. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, uh we gonna take Columbia. Columbia had twenty three thousand people in it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand, man? My granddaddy used to come home from work, and that Joker was clean. Had his press pants, alligator shoes on. I didn't know that Joker had a job that was that dangerous and that nasty. Coming from the mink side? Come, no, he was coming from Monsanto <laughs> down the street over here. Oh, the one that closed down. He yeah. came from Monsanto plant clean yeah. every day. But they used to make them take a shower because they didn't want them bringing that contaminated stuff home. Mm -hmm. They had to take a shower. But he was clean when he came home. And we saw that. I saw generations of men mm -hmm. in East Hill. Okay? Right. The granddaddies. Right. My daddy. Right. Uncles, everybody I knew was working black. Yeah. yeah, they had stuff, and you think about that time period. They had stuff. My granddad had a car, two cars. Grandmama had a car. They had a nice house. Mm -hmm. you Did know, your mother work? My mama was working. Oh, she was. She okay, was my too. mom and dad were blue collar people. Okay? Right. My dad yeah. was a factory worker. My mother was a cosmetologist, so they had to go to work. Right. But yeah. they worked. They had stuff. My our generation. And I'm including myself in with y'all. Our generation ain't gonna live that good. No, all right. Not, not, they not, got us well, up under extreme stress, yeah, and yeah, it's like yeah. that. Uh, we didn't have video games in the '70s. Right. We had the Super Bowl, <laughs> long electric, electric, the vibrating one, the vibrating board <laughs> that you put the men on and you turn it on. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can set all the men up just as perfectly as you could. <laughs> <laughs> have them in order like you want them to go and you hit the electric mm -hmm, yeah. and they be riding turning this circle that's what they are doing to the population I was spinning in circles they got Damn. the electricity on us mm. they're yeah. turning off here now and then just like right now in Columbia we in a period of time which electricity is not on we really hold on going, listen though. to them now we ain't got no killing going on game bang style because they done put all them cats in jail. Mm -hmm. You ain't got all that going on right now. You got a lot of deaths from overdoses and stuff going on. That's the calm before the storm. 
because about two or three more years, they're going to hit that electricity again and have all of us spinning. It's done on purpose. Oh, yeah. They're not going to give us enough time to get our bearings together to be mm. able to come up with a plan to, mm. co- to counter what's going on. During slavery, you talked about the time period that we in, this 55 year time period. Dude, slavery was from 1619 to 1865. Uh, to 1865. Then you had the the Reconstruction era. Then you had all that World War One. It's never been a time that we've been good, but we were close. Yeah. So let me go on to some more scripture. I don't I don't preach, but I will hit you with some scripture. That book said, Frank. <laughs> And the man said it, so it was in red. Yeah, yeah, what do yeah. it profit a man? Gain the world and lose his soul. soul. Yes. Black folk gained the world and lose lost our soul. soul. Oh, they called us soul people, soul brother. Yep. What's up? Soul, soul. sister. Right. Yep. We, I got soul. Then you come on soul train every yep. second. You ain't got that no more. So no. what you got? You got <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> and then ain't it. Look, look, hold look, on, hold can on, I, hold can on, I jump in right. for when my family from Detroit would come down here, and just back in the day, mm-hmm. and you know, black folks, everybody, you know, everybody, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, nod the head, nod the head back. They be like, you know them, you know them. They, they wasn't used to that. Mm-hmm. Close their mm-hmm. mind. But now, if you do that today, them kids in them skinny jeans look at you like you crazy, yeah. like they ready to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, look at look at your culture. You talking about culture? Look at how we now. Y'all came down here. The Detroit people came down. It wasn't no big deal for the Detroit people come down here because we went up there. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, right. they ain't doing nothing coming home. Right, right, right. All right. But now you got folk from coming in from the West Coast yeah. to Cali. Columbia. I ain't even talking about Cali. I'm talking about Oregon, yeah. Washington. Washington. Yeah, I knew it. You yeah. got folk coming here from Vermont. Mm. Oh, and I and you know where I work at? Because I work with your mom. Uh, why you? What What are you doing here in town? Oh, we could, you know, we come here because we heard it's so wonderful to live here. Tan, what you moving in for? Mm. Because they done ran them out from where they here because them people under stress too. Mm. Everybody under stress. Yeah, man. You, if you look, I put on Facebook earlier today. I don't know if you saw it. The man, our average man now is making two hundred and some odd dollars less <laughs> than he was forty four years ago. Right. That's what. That's why I stay on this. This one thing, man. Uh, like, like I said, a lot of stuff that they push out will destroy your community. Yeah. Back in the day, it was easier when we used to have this mentality of a man take care of the household, right? That's right. Yes. But today, it's- a man taking care of the household, you better get it. The woman got to help. The, yeah. the pay mm-hmm. that a person is getting, it. he crazy. gonna have to work three jobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and never you never gonna see him if never. he's really doing. No care life, of the you sacrifice your life. They changed yeah. that whole Completely. game. That paradigm mm-hmm. got shifted. Yes, the and if folk, I still run. When I run across a girl that be like, I want a man that can take care of it, I leave her the heck alone. For real. I, yeah. I, I run. It's For not real. gonna happen in today's time. Right. It's but not see, no she real ain't at all. Never, that so do you think? Talking about excuse me, that woman that you talking about, God bless her. She has never really seen. A real male female interaction, and that's deeper too because right. in our community, mm-hmm. you done had all this this foolishness pumped into our people. Yeah. Oh yes, in yes. which we can't even love each other no more. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Okay, I ain't got no problem with interracial relationship, right. but we can't love each other no more. Yeah. My girl, I had girlfriends. My two high school sweethearts lived around the corner from me. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, that's a whole other big dynamic in and of itself. But they live down the street. I knew their grandma and granddad. Mm-hmm. They oh, mine. yeah, family. No, yeah, you know, yeah, we yeah. knew each nah, other. We knew because you had to then yeah, because yeah. being from Columbia, you There's had to know who you was talking to because you might be kin. Right. All right. right. So you had a, hey, that girl right there, you know, she kin. You can't stay and call it up. Right, right. So you had it. Right. We don't even teach you. You know, they, and, and, and I'm sorry, I got to say this, okay, and I, and I don't want no friction between my gay friends. But it's more apropos in our community for to be gay than it is for a black man, black woman to love each other. Yeah. Now that's when you need to be fed, trying to figure out what's going on. Oh yeah, right. there's a lot of stuff right. going on. For it's real. a lot. Of, it's it's, it's almost preached and taught 
for us to not get along anymore, not accept each other. Creative. You know, yeah. even with the reality TV, they don't be That's enjoying themselves on reality TV. Mm -hmm. They be arguing, and, and all they find is new catchphrases to argue and put somebody down, and new catchphrases to be, you know, more witty in an mm -hmm. argument. They never find out how people are actually turning up, enjoying this money, enjoying this fame. That's not shown. I, I try to get people to pay attention to that because I, I'm one, I turn my TV off. I'm not going to be a TV watcher because I understand the only thing that's going to be on that TV is what they want you to see. Right. Mm -hmm. They right. got control of that. Mm -hmm. So that is able to feed you whatever they want you to be fed to do whatever it is objectively that they want to accomplish. Yeah, and we really. fall for it every time. Every, every time. time. We fall for it every time. And we don't see it. it ain't, I'm not blaming us right. for being what we are as human. I tell that people all the time. We are ignorant. Mm -hmm. If you don't think you're ignorant, then tell me what's happening over across the street right now. <laughs> right. You don't see it. You don't have no knowledge of it. You right. have to you accept what That's we right. are. We right. are ignorant. And the, the, as soon as you understand how ignorance really works, it's the lack of knowledge, not knowing. At right. that point, you are able to set yourself on a different foundation to not fall for stuff. Right. But if you can't do that, man, they pulling you like a puppet all the way around. All right. Day. All day, every day. And I, 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 a lot of my words, spoken word, when I do do this, this is what I do. I want people to understand that you can't just be living here without purpose like that. Right. right. You, you can't just gotta be, have your purpose, man. You can't just Come be on. going along with stuff just because it's what's the trending thing to do. Exactly. Right? Because you become just as much as the issue mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. you that you want to fight against. You don't even realize you be causing the problem that you want to stop. Right. Can so, I go ahead? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh. And you and when you were in law enforcement, how, how many years were you? I did eleven years total. I was three years. years in the prison and eight years as a deputy sheriff. All right. Which one did you like better? Neither one of them. Okay. <laughs> but did you did you ever have a moment to where you felt like that might be happening, like with what you wanted to do in the community and and, and with the way you would? Obviously, you you have this pure intention to make to make people see that they can change the circumstance and help them with that. But did you find that in that line of work that it was it was, you know what I mean? Like you weren't, it was you weren't able to do it in the. In you weren't the, impacting the community the way that you thought you were before I'll, you I'll, got involved. I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question very yeah. creatively. How it happened to me, right? Because when I first started in this field, yeah. I didn't have this mindset. I had the other mindset. I was ignorant. I was blind. I, my father was a minister. I was raised up in the church. I was taught these certain things. I was guided this certain way. Yeah. So I was in a box that I didn't see that I was in. And what ended up happening to me is being in law enforcement pulled me outside of this box to explore all these other things that was happening. Right. So when that happened to me, I started seeing that people not awake or in their box were not able to get out of that box until something happened to be able to show them that. Mm -hmm. That happened to me. So that's when I kind of woke up to a lot of stuff. And, you know, I, I had this mentality, and, and I still even right now today, I'll be honest and open. Me and my sisters, we are not on the same page. Everybody's mm -hmm. got their success level of stuff. I got a sister that got a doctorate, another mm -hmm. one that's finna get a doctorate in the nursing field. Or, right. I mean, successful people. Mm -hmm. And we all had this mentality of if we could just get in there, we can be that change that needs to happen to make things better. Right. I woke up before all of them. They still sleep. <laughs> ah. Right. They still sleep. So what did you wake up to the room? I woke up and I said, you know, I got to get up out of this thing. Yeah. Because in this thing, there is no change. Right. It's set up when people, people it, would all the time say, we got to fix this system. It ain't broken. It's running just like it need to be running. Just like they wanted it to. And, and, and if you think you're going to fix it, that's what they want you to do. Get up in here and watch these policies, these procedures, and this stuff that you got to follow and watch you do it. If yeah. you don't think you're going to do it, people come up missing. Right. Yeah. I, I can tell you a story about a, and it, it just don't even make sense. You can't make it make sense to you. Where another, a judge went to another judge's house and committed suicide. Does that even sound right? Why am I going to go to your house? To commit suicide. To kill myself. And both of us are judges. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That's All deep. right. The so man went to another man's house and com what, like went to the bathroom and blew his brains out? On his land. Found him on his land. Just, I'm just over here. That's that thing of. Just, a lot so of, he a didn't lot. even go in the house. He just. No, no, no. 
Well, by just story, by, by story, that's how it happened, right? But, but like, does that make sense? Like, why? I, I can do that at home. Right it's kind, of, it's kind of like the witness. The witness, they they said that uh, in a uh, Amber Geiger. Yeah, they said he was driving four hours to get a sack of weed. Yeah, <laughs> there ain't no nigga in the history of niggas yeah. driving Elbow. four hours to get a sack, sack of weed. So yeah. when you're able well, to see to those yeah. powers to be able to manipulate like that, mm -hmm. you don't want to be a part of that, right? Because it, it comes down to that real survival uh, of the mm -hmm. fittest. And, it, and this thing, if we understand that it wasn't set up with us in mind at the beginning, wow. All right. what makes you think church. it's still set up church. now and ain't nothing right. changed? Ain't nothing can changed. Get, can we get church? Church. Church. church? church. Hold on, let me turn it on and go up. Church. 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 So yes. that, <laughs> that was my wake up part. And when I woke up to it and having that mindset of thinking like, I can be up in there, I can run for sheriff, I can be the sheriff. And I, I, was, I said, no, nah, that kill me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me let me resign. Oh, they, oh, they, oh, they set you up for some bullshit. Oh yeah. yeah. Let me let me resign dope. and really yeah. get active in doing the stuff that I need to do to really help community. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, this is the hardest thing that I'm doing because I know my community sleep. Right. It's sad to know that sleep because that it, it's a whole nother pressure in life. Like you be like, man, am I really finna take this on? Am I really finna do this? Like I know what I'm up against, but, but I, I I push. It's hard because I you have to. Mm -hmm. If you have any purpose, yeah. you ain't got no choice but to do it. After that, <laughs> it ain't nothing else to live right. for once you see that. And, and when you make them steps, you better have your house in order. Because no. if they find a hole in that house, they push it. It they might coming. be a hole that big. By the time it's done, be that big. They, they're that's coming. the scariest and, and part they, about the podcast. Yeah, that's a, it that, is. Oh, man, that's a, the that's a thing that I, I know. They are so creative. A lot of people think death is the worst thing. <laughs> they are so creative. Like when we talk about the Bill Cosby thing, and when we talk, oh man, <laughs> that, crazily, that's creative as hell. I, I want people to really kind of dig into what's really going on, even with the R. Kelly situation. Oh yeah, and with, definitely. with a lot of this stuff, but man, dude, I'll tell you right now, I'd rather you commit murder and get uh, charged with a murder conviction than to get convicted of a sexual assault. Especially right. in the state of Tennessee, because right. it's like a permanent conviction. Even once you've done your time, it's, it don't even matter. You yeah. are still seen as a sex offender. You gotta go register. You gotta go check in. You can't live in this area. You, right. It's, a, you it's a lifetime any, sentence. If you leave any torture. detail out, they will put your ass. You right back. You'll up show right back up in mobile control as you a sex offender these. again, and ain't even committed. Yeah, so when I like, done it. Yeah. Don't oh. make that's why certain female I can't deal with. If they yeah. seem like they had that little attitude or that little part that they might get offended and just I know some of them that lie. Yeah. I was about to ask in your time and, in the courtroom. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot, yeah. I, I know them. I know I'll tell you a, spe a specific situation that I was literally involved in. I knew the girl and I knew the guy. So I know she was lying. Oh. And I could I couldn't I was trying to save him. I was trying to tell him, dude, listen, this girl is she doesn't have her marbles. You she and it, 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 it ain't even her fault. She was messed up from her environment. She didn't even realize how bad she was. No. But this is what I woke up to. I'm like, sh even she can't control herself from what she's doing because she sees things differently. Right, right. So I'm trying to help him. Dude, run. Don't do it. He messed around and got a pregnant. I, I was like, oh my God, his life is over. Yeah. And he, he did not believe me. She f lied, took him to the court, said he hit her. She felt threatened for him, put the baby on the same uh, prote order of protection. Wow. This yeah. nut still goes back over there and see her when she, ah, oh, you can come around what night. And as soon as she get mad, she called oh. police and violated the order of protection, lock him up again. Oh, same oh. process. Oh, That's how and bad, oh, and, and, and sadly, I wish I could say she's choosing to do it. She yeah. just that damaged that she don't realize that she's bad and she she's using the system for what it's not built for. Right. Well, I don't really say what it's not built for. It's built for it. It's built to keep this thing it's going on because right. while he's going through that, he'll never be able to help a community. No. He'll never be able to get his mind in the right place right. To, to do anything to thrive, even to make her better. I was trying to keep you from making her worse mm. by not talking to her and then you did the opposite and talked to her it made her worse. Sometimes you gotta leave shit in the yard. Man, let me, let, me, <laughs> Come on, let me add on something that Mr. Frank is saying right now about that. <clears throat> From my line of work, and, and Frank, I don't know how deep you got into it, but from my study and my 
the education and my experiences, uh, one of the things that I was brought up learning to do or learning to, to process is that when you have a crime that's committed, it's certain things that don't meet the level of being criminal. Okay? And when you start bringing up the, the whole sexual thing, yeah. which we know everything that's immoral might not be illegal. Mm-hmm. And there are some things that's legal that's immoral. immoral. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Okay? Uh, we we have gone from a time we we are drifting back into the dark ages. Oh yeah, we are devolving as a society, and and we can talk about the black society, but this is for society yeah, in general. All in, in general, general okay. Man, I want to make sure, personally, that if you do something to somebody, it don't make no difference what it is. That we gonna try to make sure that you go to jail for. It. Mm. If you are harming a person. Mm. If you're committing a what they call a mala and say crime, which is bad in itself, you got some crimes as crimes in every society. Ah, yes. Okay. Yes. Rape, murder, robbing and stealing, all right. that's gonna be bad right. anywhere. Okay. We can have levels in this society <laughs> to determine the mm-hmm. the the severity. Yeah. And what we're going to do with you on that. Yeah. Right. Now that being said, if any investigation, you if we went by what we were talking about, he was asking you the quit, you were asking Frank earlier. Yeah. Uh, how 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 hard is it or what level yeah. of people go to prison based on telling based, based upon on. snitching or whatever, yeah. you come to find out most people go to prison based upon the fact they they made a plea. Yeah. They yeah. got the deal, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So when you get into that, you mm-hmm. learn that they don't have a lot of evidence on some of these folks. Yeah. So when you start getting into evidence, say that word one more time. Evidence, proof. That's something. That That's what not, I'm gonna teach next week. Proof. That, that is something rules that is not required nowadays. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> when you start getting into evidence and proof, and that's one of the things that a lot of folk was, a lot of the feminists were saying, and, and they was making an argument and said, well. These things happen, and and we, you know, nobody believes us. Mm-hmm. People believe women when they come up and say somebody yeah. did something to them. Mm-hmm. All right? yeah. the level of belief goes down the longer that you wait. Exactly. So right. how come you didn't exactly. tell me this early? Exactly. Okay. Uh, now and that's for that, That's not to say it didn't happen. Right. But okay? it's still the level but it's of the, belief. The level of belief down, goes down. Yeah. So let's go to proof. If a if in, in whether or not one sex is more righteous than another sex. All right. All right? I told a woman uh, last night, said men have never been worth a quarter. <laughs> I mean, it's just in, it's in the nature of a man <laughs> not to act right. Yeah. <laughs> but women has been what saved us. Time and time again. Okay? Yes. If you ain't got a righteous mama, you through. Yeah, right. You right. Big facts. All right. If Big you ain't, if your mama ain't righteous, you 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 all the you way. Do. You S O L. Let me say this right here. I know seven women that told somebody a baby was theirs and it wasn't. I knew mm. you was about to say that. Yeah. Man. Okay. That so if mad. if that if I know seven that did that, how you gonna say? That everything that come out of every woman's mouth is the truth. Right. You can't. You can't. Nothing that. So then, if you can't say that, what do we go to to determine? You go to evidence and mm-hmm. proof. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. this is what you go through. This is why we have a criminal justice system the way we have. Yeah. Right. You cannot turn the criminal justice system into a reality show. Right. And that's what they turn it into. You put R. Kelly. What he did or didn't do, oh, I saw it on the video. If you saw the video, you did something illegal. Mm -hmm. You need to be going to jail, too. Right. I'm going to put that out there. Right. right? Because if you saw what they said he did. Then he was already committing the crime. And I ain't (laughs) seen it. I ain't seen it. Okay. If you saw that. I know she was young. I knew she was there. If you saw that, then you just committed a crime, huh? Now. This girl put this video out about R. Kelly. R. Kelly, personally speaking, I like grown women. Yes. I always have. 
Yes. Dude, if I was R. Kelly and I got famous, the first person I'm going to go holler at was <coughs> Janet Jackson. I'm not yeah. going to go holler at Aaliyah. Mm -mm. All right, so we know he messed up. Right. Let's leave that out there. But they arrested R. Kelly on some stuff that's, y'all, almost 20 years old. A lot of folks think this is some brand new stuff they done brought up on him. This stuff is not brand new. I've been researching. Because when they, just like uh, Bill Cosby, when somebody tell me something, I research. Yeah. My roommate's cousin, my room, yeah, it's it's the old stuff. Yeah. It's the same videotape everybody talking about. Dude come up and this woman bring all, they patting him on the back. I found a box of videotapes and in it, go look it up on YouTube, it's on YouTube. I saw a videotape I thought was a Bulls basketball game, but it said R. Kelly, and I looked at it, and it was him on it with these. That ain't nothing new. So what you what you ain't listening to, what I'm listening to is, how did you get it? That's what I'm thinking. But they ain't focusing on that. How you just find a See, that's how tape. you bring this stuff out in the media. And you put it up for people ain't think, oh, he's just so awful. Which he is. Hmm. He's awful. He was doing such and such. Because hmm. you already know that he did X, Y, and Z hmm. 15 years ago when they brought the other tape out. That was five years old. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Yeah. That tape was old. It wasn't a but new tape. But him being awful and him being guilty of this is, is now, two different things. Uh, well, he was guilty. He was guilty. He was guilty. You know what I'm saying? What they trying to bring him up on? on. Yeah. They had a trial for Kelly. That's what I'm saying. The yeah. FBI, highest investigated body in America. When you the men in black show up, I'm like, okay, I'm listening to what they saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know what they did to us. Mm -hmm. I know what they did to Dr. King, and then I'm listening to what they say because they ain't playing. No. Yeah. Me and the black show up, they said, uh, we can't determine what the age of this young lady is. He got acquitted in a courthouse. Yes. Yes. Now, because he got acquitted in a state courthouse, they bringing him up on charges in a federal, federal courthouse yeah. now. Because the woman came out and said something, we got new evidence. Because somebody now is going to talk. Okay? Mm. That's where our killer, was this thing where our killer come in at. Right, right. Now, now, you bringing up some stuff old, and you got somebody going to talk, why come they didn't talk then? Now, whether or not they put him in jail for it, it's going to be up to a court to determine that. Right. But what I'm listening to, no, in the moral in sense... Of the here and now, and, and sitting down at the barbershop type of style of justice, and we listen com and communing as brothers. Yeah. What? What's you that? knew FBI, federal government, whoever, you knew then. When yeah, y'all acquitted know. him, you could have brought them charges up then. So, Why come you didn't do it? So it's several things going on. One is the person that you got in office. Hmm. And he man. don't, and he don't want you to know who Stormy Daniels is. Well, no, he don't want you to know that <laughs> the boys got him. Yeah. Okay. He trying. They throwing distractions out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. A magician always throws some smoke up and watch this hand right here. Why well, this hand right here is the one that's doing something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you got some. It's a whole bunch of stuff going on. That brought this up to right now. It's a whole bunch of stuff that brought up Bill Cosby. I played rock, paper, scissors when I was a kid. Y'all don't know nothing about that because y'all video game people, you know. What rock, you mean? You know, <laughs> rock, rock, paper, right scissors, right? When you playing rock, paper, I'm scissors, be, this man had a billion dollars. Yep. Who got enough pool to pull a billion dollars down? Another billion dollars. Was he really trying to buy NBC? <laughs> He tried to buy CBS. He tried to buy NBC a long time ago. Mm. I suggest y'all to go and, and read up on Tariq Nasheed because an old wise man told me something. He told me something a long time ago. And I'm talking about TSU old, mm. 25, 26, 27 years ago. He said all sexual smears are political. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's a hell of a statement right there. You know? Okay. Wow. You got real stuff, uh, little, right. real stuff. Going Somebody right. really, girls that done got really got hurt. But them smear campaigns down at these courthouses that they, they ain't even looking at. Yeah, right. Because he know he can't prove it. Right. However, they need they need some justice. 
But the one, but like. But you're going to go pull out some Mark Kelly stuff that you done already tried. Well, Bill Cosby had, though. what, 32 women exactly. on the cover of a magazine? All the together. women that he had on the magazine, I'm going to break this down. I got this from Tariq Nasheed. Okay, because mm-hmm. I can't can't get credit for this, and and I suggest you listen to him if you ain't listen to that bro. No, I got okay? all the hidden colors. Now, I don't I don't agree with everything he say, but I listen, and because it brought up something to me that I always have wondered. My man said that it is extortion on black entertainers that's been going all the way back to the late eighties, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. in the early nineties before y'all time. Bill, all these women, them, them women, they put them old women on there. They pulled them up and had them on a cover magazine talking about uh, they was mistresses of Bill Cosby. Not no rape victim. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, they see people like myself, I done got an elephant memory. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you're going to pull these same women out, all of a sudden he raped me. Mm-hmm. Okay? Then when mm-hmm. you start listening to it, if you broke those 60 some women down, it was only like five or six of them that really had a credible story to tell. Yeah, that yeah. They, one of them was in a relationship with Bill Cosby. All right, let me de- let you in on this. The one that I'm talking about, the daughter went to Bill Cosby, told Bill Cosby, Mr. Cosby, I'm your daughter. If you don't give me $40 million, I'm going to go to the world and tell you everybody that you're my daughter. 40 M's. He, shut, he slammed the door in her face, called the police. This girl just came over my house trying million. to blackmail me. You heard me? She had she had two two dudes with her. The two dudes that was with her was of a certain country that's got some interesting stuff going on with our president right now. Hmm. All right. Well, then, all of a sudden, that night, Bill called the son get killed. Wait, 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 but then didn't, didn't the person uh Oh you already know how is it uh the the killer um of Bill Cosby's son Well you know I know what you're about to say, go ahead. But like the killer of Bill Cosby's son was Russian though. Ukraine, yeah. yeah Ukraine, yeah, over, so, over there. Because I remember that. Because it was like crazy. Because they see, were trying, ain't nobody talking because about that. Because when they yet. asked, they were asked, because Bill Cosby's son got killed on the freeway. Oh, I know, I know the full yeah. story. So when they were like, um, why you know how who does a carjacking on the freeway? They tried to say, well, that's how they do it over there. That he brought that style of burglary or robbery. Yeah, oh, that's like what they do. Listen yeah, to this. yeah. Listen to this. <laughs> who came up for parole two, three days after they put Bill Cosby in jail? Dude, to kill Ennis Cosby. Mm. Get the get out of here. <laughs> if I'm lying, it came from Dr. Cosby's wife. Wait, his son. Wait, his son's murderer went up for parole days after he got convicted and put in jail. After he got sentenced. Mm-hmm. It's a lot they, of thought, stuff they thought. They thought. They thought. They thought Dr. Cobb's <laughs> wife was slipping. Mm-mm. She, her people was on there. No, he ain't getting out. And I said he ain't getting out. They from parole, dude. They ain't been twenty years, dude. They ain't even been twenty. That's about the level. Now hold on, let me break this down wow. to you. Let me this break. I'm, wow. Yeah, I'm gonna break it down some more. Cause Tariq Nasheed kind of laid the timeline out. Okay. All right. Then you got Bill Cosby. Mm-hmm. What what happened to Easy? Oh man, somebody gave him something. Okay, but they, they all that in everybody. Oh, 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 it was shoe night. <laughs> hmm. You know what? Okay, hold on. I'm finna get deeper. What happened to Tupac? <laughs> I, I don't even I don't even know Pop, that was that's that's so sick. he was he that's was so running sick. he was running Damn. you saw us out there in the front mm-hmm. it, it ain't who you see in the front it's who behind mm-hmm. who got the money from the record company after all these folk went to jail mm-hmm. another deep 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 documentary you need to catch what it, uh, welcome to death death row mm-hmm. uh, my man that started uh, Solar Records. Dick Griffey. You don't know who Dick Griffey is. Dick Griffey. Yeah, yes. Uh, Dick Griffey yeah, started Solar Records. And he also was a man who was behind the scenes with Soul Train. Yep, yep. Powerful dude. There's a documentary of him on, okay. on Netflix called okay. Godfather. He's on, he, he's on Welcome to Death Row. Dick Griffey, at the end of that documentary, says, Well, who got the money? Interscope Records, man, was failing. Interscope Records was getting ready to go out of business mm-hmm. until Death Row Records came along. Mm-hmm. All right? 
Mm-hmm. So then, what happened to OJ? I feel like that man was set up, and this gonna hold be, on. This is not gonna be but, popular. But then, <laughs> but why is it all these black men like entertain us? Oh, I'm sorry. I read The oh, Killer Mockingbird when I was way too young, so the OJ case really throws me. <laughs> what happened to OJ? Like is- Why is it that OJ is a villain? Oh, he killed him. I know he killed How do you know he killed Because the TV told you. Because the TV told you. But if you really look at it, if you really, really look at it, they couldn't, but they could have put it on that man. But if you look at it, if we're talking about that word evidence again. I said, just- I said for two weeks, for two years with Dr. Henry Lee, in the end service. I had Dr. Henry Lee tell 500 policemen they were stupid at the end service. And then showed them why they were stupid and showed the evidence. And in case you don't know who Henry Lee was, Henry Lee was the uh, the uh, uh, expert witness for O.J. Simpson mm. that Ralph Wilson paid for. See, Ralph Wilson was owner of the Buffalo Bill. What did I tell you earlier? It's rock, paper, scissors. Mm-hmm. See, if he, OJ didn't have Ralph Wilson backing him, OJ be in the pen. Right. Mm. Okay? He the one. You know, they talk about all this blood they had, but this man that cut two people's throat, but there ain't no blood on the, on, the, on the brake pedal and on the accelerator of the car. Right. Ain't nothing. Do you take his shoes off? Right? See, I taught y'all some of this in class. Yeah. Then... All right, let's get off OJ for a minute, cause I can go on about OJ three hours. I'm gonna go home and watch a football game. Let's go on a little bit further. Who was the next one they got hold to? Michael Jackson. Man, man, I've always well, I can't even say I've always, but Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory said, if you want to know if something ain't right, look into who gets the life insurance. Look who gets the life insurance money. Who gets paid out? He was like, and if you look at it. Uh, his mama ain't even in the wheel, and his kids' names are spelled wrong. He said, if that don't let you know that something was off, you got a, you got a billion-dollar life insurance policy, and your kids' names ain't even spelled right. He said, if that don't at least let you know a little something. To let you know, it, the people out there that don't know who Dick Griffey is, let y'all know, Dick Griffey, I mean, uh, Dick, Dick Gregory, Gregory, I'm sorry. Yeah. Dick Gregory is the man that was responsible for, for putting the Zapruder film on television. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Zapruder film, uh, Ron okay. Brown. Um, now, let me go on a little yeah. bit further. We ain't even gonna get into Brian Brown because that's political. But yeah. then, what the happened Gregory. to Prince? Right, exactly. Right, the Gregory. I did a show. I did a show with. Uh, yeah, I did a show on the Coles views. By Prince, she had me on two hours. Because this because you know reason why because y'all know everybody know I'm a Prince fan. Yeah, everybody know that was my man. Yeah. He had he had more fentanyl. In his system, that could have killed half Columbia. He had record-breaking numbers of fentanyl. Mm. I don't have the actual numbers to throw out there to you, but, yeah. but he had sixty percent more than the average overdose death. Jesus. Okay, where did where did he? he this man, dude, was going getting him these pain pills. Oh, Prince was an addict. Now something happened to Prince. Yeah, but something happened to him. Some, but. Did he think these people was helping him? Yeah. And next mm-hmm. thing you know, they done got him woe down. Why was Prince's agent done got rid of his royalties and she was setting up his royalties to come through to her in an unknown thing? Right. See, it's more to this. Then, uh, hey. all of a sudden, and, and, and it pains me to know it, but then Prince had that incident on the airplane mm-hmm. where they had to revive him. Mm-hmm. That wasn't the same thing that killed him. And that plane was owned by Warren Buffett, by the way. Okay. But whatever happened to him, Mm -hmm. which they made it, they wanted him to die on that plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they got him two days later, uh, four or five days later at his house. He had two bottles of pills. He had one bottle of Aleve. Yeah. Had another bottle of bare aspirin. The supposed. In those two bottles, was Vicodin, hydrocodone, and Tylenol tablets. But when they analyzed them, couldn't find out the tablets. It was 33 in one bottle, 60 in another. One bottle had probably 15% was fake. 
The other bottle had 5% that was fake. And one of those bottles had a pill that had enough Vicodin in it to, to kill half a Columbia. You're talking about fentanyl. Had enough fentanyl. Had enough fentanyl. I'm sorry. Yeah, you got it. Had enough fentanyl. It was a fake Vicodin pill. Yeah, I read the that. Pr- the you press. I posted it on the page yeah. a week ago. They pulled, they pulled the DEA. When they found out the levels that he had in the system, the DEA immediately flew in from Chicago to Minneapolis, went in out there and did a search on his house because they thought they were making it out there. Damn. Okay. They found so much. They didn't find nothing. They have not found, seen a level of fentanyl in anybody's system since he died. The Similar to what Prince had. One. Number two, the pills were counterfeit. So they knew that certain Chinese mm-hmm. companies was making these fake pills. So yeah. they traced it back. All the known places in China that was doing it, they have not found a press. They did a forensic analysis on these pills. And they can tell you what press, what pill press they came up. They ain't seen it nowhere in the world. So a special press made. Yeah, yeah. so you, you take all it of It don't take much to make no pills. Yeah, but you but, then but usually mm-hmm. with, with dealers, they yeah. with people's making these pills, they see these pills pop up in certain spots. Right, they might right. pop up in the lounge, he pop got up a in one Chicago. One. Got yeah. a special batch. He yes. got a they wow. they put a McKeel pill in there and right. he got it. And then next thing you mm-hmm. know, Prince, one night, several years ago, Prince, where's uh this was actually in two thousand four. 15, around this time of year. Prince, he was on Twitter one night. Where Purple Rain Deluxe at? He said, you call Warner Brothers because I, I sent them the music. They got it. But they don't want to pay me for my new music. See, yeah. Prince had the music, the new stuff that he had in it, they didn't want to pay him for. Oh, he had, what, like 20 albums worth of stuff? Or okay, no, and at Purple Rain Deluxe, he had three albums of music that came out to the eight songs that was on Purple Rain. Mm. Okay, that's what's on Purple Rain Deluxe. He said they don't want to pay me for that. He and he put it Prince would when he hit you up because he sent. I talked to Prince online. Okay, mm-hmm. when he sent you a message or he sent you an email, it was all in capital letters, like he was yelling. He yeah. didn't. That's how, that was his signature to let you know if it was Peter Bray Strong or whoever it was that was sending you something. He would put you big capital letters. Mm. So they ain't want to pay me for my music, Frank. You know what you was talking about marketing mm-hmm. early and royalties and making sure you get what you're supposed to get. Right. They didn't want paying for it. But they got now, it now, though. Hold on. Next month, 1999 Deluxe coming out. They got five CD coming out and a DVD. And a DVD. That's what I saw about the DVD. So who getting that check? Warner, bro. God, uh, See? So when you <laughs> when you look at all of this stuff, it, it, it it's got a center... Thing mm-hmm. I tell all y'all offline who 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 it is, but it's a center. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany the call, I got you, baby. Uh, it's it's all goes back to the same people. This man, nah. yeah. With all I of this feel like stuff, I know who these people are. And then, but you, well, yeah. But then yeah. you looking at it, and it's like, okay, why is all the black people going on? I would get into Tom Brady tonight in the New England Patriots, but I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, we speaking of not doing that. We, if we want to hear some of the uh, the poetry Let's too, the okay, we gotta, we, we're gonna have to change man, gears. I, I, was, I was in, man. We <laughs> in there. Man. I, I was gonna ask about Jesse Smollett if anybody paid attention to that. Yeah, but oh, right, wow. wait, I, wait, we going juicy. I, I ain't we'll, gonna part two to this. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we can always have y'all come back another <laughs> time. For sure, for sure. For sure. Two. This is good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> man, what you about to say about Tom Brady? Uh oh. I was pulling for the Patriots. I'm trying to get a check. <laughs> so, so who's gonna go first, you or him? Oh no! I'm the, Are you deferring to me? Yeah, oh, yeah, so no. yeah. Just want me hit like guess, that, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it, man. So check this out. So, Again, like I say, I, I do stuff on the conscious tip. Try to wake people up and send messages creatively. So this poem right here that you're about to hear is titled "Broken," uh, and it's titled "Broken for a Reason." And you'll actually catch the stuff as I actually speak or say it within this poem. It starts out hot. In order for our vision of a better world to truly be better, we must be willing to face the facts that we are broken. I said in order for our vision of a better world to truly be better, we must be willing to face the facts that we are broken. 
broken from these unhealthy environments that manipulate, segregate, diversitate, discriminate, desensitate, and then educate us to eliminate by the unconscious love to hate. I can only pray that fate won't let that line blow your mind. But just in case of a bold soul miss it, don't panic. I promise I'll put it in MP3 format just so that you can later on hit rewind. You see, we've been broken so long that it's become our normality. And I'm out here struggling so hard to get the blind to see this reality, but they can't. Because of this instilled fear, we'll close our eyes scared to death to look at this reality. You see, we've been broken with time. So broken that I can never find enough of it to ease my mind. You see, things are happening so fast that I only wish that I could press pause. Or even better, Lord, allow me to hit rewind. There's so many things left unsaid that still I just want to say. Some more time that I need just so that I can go outside and play. And Lord, since it is you that is all-knowing and I really wouldn't have it any other way, I'd like to ask for a little bit more time upon me visiting my very last days. And I only ask of it because I know there are so many souls out here longing to be saved. So many trapped living in this world. Stuck in that mentality of a slave, you see. We're broken. And even though there are no more whips and chains, the damage done to us psychologically has messed up our good brain. They took the shackles off of our feet so that we could dance in the rain, but secretly they knew that even if we did escape, we'd run right back to the same things. And we keep running back to the same things because we're broken. And when I seen it, my internal soul started to hurt down on the inside. And next came those physical effects. Tears started to form. I'd lay in bed at night and cry. And time would no longer work. But mean there was no more time for me to keep sitting around asking, why? Mm. You see, this movement that I have has to start now. Or else with me, my dreams will soon die. Broken. Deep. <laughs> church, deep. church. Deep. That was deep. That was deep. Uh, that you know, you know, it's crazy. Man. Even though there are no more whips and chains, we are still killing each other for man. whips and Those chains. Yeah, I know it. Creatively, man. All right. That was good. Thank you for that, bro. Do, do you have yours ready? No, I don't have anything memorized. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was on your phone. Was it not uh, on your phone? Yeah, no, after, after that. Um, okay, you not right. following that up? <laughs> yeah, I just got to leave. Um, <laughs> hey, man, that was, man, <laughs> that was good. Uh, I will freestyle something, but I don't want to be embarrassed. No, it's okay. <laughs> what else, what else do you have for us? What else you got over there? Oh, it's, well, man, I, I do a lot of stuff. Let me see what else I can pull out of. Um, hmm. <laughs> I got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of different things. Let me give another one. This is one um, that really hits people hard when they find out about me. Uh, and it's actually a kind of introduction to me. Uh, it's titled, I'm Sorry, okay. with Purpose. Uh, so let me begin this introduction with who I am. The name given to me is Frank Sykes, and yes, I'm a proud black man. By the time I turned 18, that nickname given was Frizzy. If you ask me if I liked it, I'll tell you I love it. I think it's something rather unique. You see, I completed high school to the fullest, did a year and a half in college. While I was there, I obtained some knowledge and decided that this school thing just it was not for me. Fast forward with me, please, to when I'm now just 23, exposed to a great opportunity working as that prison guard in that system. That private industry begins with C. The total years I stayed was three. Got trained to kill if there was a need. After that, I then became that deputy. To move up fast was my mission to the top. My premonition officer of the year is one of the highest recognitions. And I can stand before you today and say, I even accomplished that. If I had the time, I'd tell you how I did it. And I know that you would get it. You stand on your feet and applaud. But I'd humble myself and say I was only doing it my job. Now you should see the man that stands in front of you since I've given you my introduction. And as uncomfortable as it is right now, I have to say that I'm law enforcement. But I come to you today because there's something that I have to say. It's been far too long for this day and too many lives have had to pay. So I guess I should just say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the accidental hurt that I had caused. If I had known what I was doing, I would have stopped myself by hitting pause. He see what can eat the eye sign the possible well, I just hit rewind on that last line, trying to get back to the time before I took that fall. 
I'm sorry. You see, I'm sorry for the lives taken away, especially the young ones of the day, the ones whose opportunity that was just stolen away. You didn't know that little Tamir could have been outside practicing to be what I am today. I'm sorry for that incident with Mr. Brown, and even though I didn't pull the trigger, I know that he shot him when he was on the ground, and if he wasn't, I know he seen him falling down and with that shot to the top of his head. He made that decision to no longer have him around. I'm sorry for these scared officers that's quick to pull these triggers. So scared that I make a decision in a split second even quicker, standing in uniform, false claiming and faking to be brave while being brainwashed by this system. Thinking that someone is going to kill them one day. But most of all, I'm sorry that it took me so long to recite this poem. You see, I stood by way too long waiting for those guilty parties to admit that they were wrong. The people knew that they did it at all shows and how the story really just sounds so dumb. All we wanted them to do was admit it and then step down off of that throne. You see, I would have to get personal and say to Mr. Wilson, the job was never meant to be for a person like you. You see, that courage needed in a stressful situation you can't create is more like a genetic trait that grew. And I know it's not his fault. He really chose a career that he was thinking was cool. The people responsible for all this mess, well, they sit at the top. Maybe they'll catch that poem before my poem is through. Nevertheless, as an officer, I stand all by myself, a man bold with pride and truth. I'll stand right here full of courage and say, I'm sorry to all of you, to the people. I am sorry. So that poem right there is actually one of my first poems I actually I uh, took stages to doing, man, and, and I was doing it at the time. I wrote it as I was still an officer. I think I wrote it in 2014, 2015, mm -hmm. uh, and it was around that time of the Timmy Rice and uh, the Mike mm -hmm. Brown, and uh, what really kind of pushed me over the edge was the Sandra Bland situation. Oh, uh, buddy. That kind of happened. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to catch up. Well, because as an officer, she should have never been in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, that situation should have never transpired to have ripple to cause her to even be put in that situation right. so mm -hmm. uh, it was at that point that my frustration kind of boiled over and I'm like you know what I got to start saying some stuff right. so I actually took that poem and the first thing I did was I put it online I knew I was bucking the system because as an officer and a lot of people don't know this and they'll tell you as an officer once you actually are under this agreement under this contract you don't sign your life away so you don't really have your first amendment Right. You cannot talk. You cannot say what you want to say without repercussion. So the wall of silence is paperwork. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's contract. Yeah. Uh, oh, I thought it was just a brotherhood of, like, no, well, no. It, it, Return it, on like, now. Even, even when you'll be taught, like, in law enforcement, if some someone of the media comes to speak to you, you refer them to media relations. Because mm. media relations is going to be the people that's already set up and designed to do things in an orderly fashion mm -hmm. so that, really and truly, they can protect the agency. Right. Because right. they know once you start opening your mouth, by accident, the stuff that's going to come out, you're going to hang the agency and yourself and everybody else up. So in fear, they make you be quiet mm -hmm. so that you don't mess it up, one, for yourself mm -hmm. and definitely for this agency. So uh, that, that silence thing is, is a truthful thing. Like, even when you want to speak on the Sandra Bland situation, like the moment that he asked her to put out that cigarette was a moment that he stepped across that line. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that like, was... She was in her car and her own what's name and had nothing to do. So for you to ask her to do something that had nothing to do with law or anything right. was a violation in itself mm -hmm. on just morals for human life. Like, mm -hmm. I don't respect you enough. You put your cigarette out. Mm -hmm. Don't work like that. If you don't want the cigarette smoke, step back a little further, you ain't getting it, right? There you go. Uh, so he took things way above where it should have went as an officer. Like, mm -hmm. that step out of the car because I didn't want to put out my cigarette. You couldn't justify that in no, no. court of law, nowhere, no. for him to... I mean, I just wish she would have held on long enough so that we could actually have that thing play out. Yeah. Uh, uh, but like I say, it should not It should have never happened. And then it, it frustrated me even more when an officer comes blind to the situation so that the second officer that came up mm -hmm. don't know you don't know what's happened before right. all you see is what's happening in the now right so you're not engaged with some stuff and i used to be mad at officers i tell officers if i ever run into something that i find out later that you created you have another fight yeah. mm -hmm. because you pull me into some stuff that should not be 
and don't expect me to try to cover your butt up. I'm just that was just me and my rawness. I'm not that type of person, okay. uniform or not. And so when you establish yourself like that, you'll notice people in the agency they they don't they they'll, they'll move they away move, from you. Exactly. They don't. Yeah. They'll try to keep stuff even hidden from you. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what type of person that I was. So anytime I had to deal with something, I dealt with it myself, knowing that I didn't want them involved. Right. Well, I I had a a situation where I. I didn't mind telling the truth when something happened. Yeah. I wrote it down exactly what it was, the story as it is, justified. I never was an ill-willed officer to do anything. But I had my, my supervisor change the narrative to my story so that it fit and sounded better so that it protected the agency. Mm, yeah. So you twisted my words that better. To, to really cover it up in more protection for the agency, knowing that we was we were lying. Right. So, Golly. a lot of that stuff, truthfully, it, it really happens. Uh, I feel like that's what happened in the, uh, that Amber Geiger situation. The narrative's being switched up to cover the agency. Oh, uh, that when something happens, the first step that they try to tell you to do is to put it to paper. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to write it out and, and have it down as soon as possible, so that it can have its truth to it. Because the more time that transpires, mm -hmm. the more you right. forget little details, things like right. that. So they try to get you to do that. But the other thing that they'll make sure that they do that if it's not going to go in the favor of helping them out, they're going to make sure that they're coaching you. They're going to brief you. Through how it should sound. Right. So that it, it's able to, to be of a benefit. And I, in, in one way, I couldn't be mad because there were some officers that shouldn't have been officers. I don't think they graduated high school, so they would literally not have to know how to write a report to make sense, right? Wait, can I jump in right go here? Go ahead. I think that stems from, and I'm, I'm going to take it, we're, we're in the same little generation here, mm. but our parents always preached to us that police officers and firefighters, that those weren't good jobs. So we, sh we all went out and tried to find better jobs. Like, you know, you're risking your life for this amount of money. Da, mm -hmm. da, da. And I mean, a lot of our parents preach that to us. So a lot of people that probably could have and would have made great police officers mm -hmm. were preached through their childhood that that's not a good, profitable job. Go get a better job. It is and they did. not. That's, it is that's not. what I'm saying. So then they did. So then all the people that probably would have made great police officers and made great firefighters and made great... Are not, and I'm not saying the ones that are, not all of them, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, are, are bad. But I'm just saying that there's a lot of people that probably would have made good officers and would have made good. Well, this is this is what I say to that. So, like, in your statement, you're saying would have made great officers and great people. And I'm, right. I'm, I'm understanding saying that they would have treated people fairly. So right, I'm, I'm right. getting that out of you. Yes. Sad truth is to say even when they are that person that's treating people fairly and doing, they're accomplishing not their objective, but this system's objective. Right. So, in honest I truth, you. I would not even tie making a great officer or being a great officer into that. That's not what you are. You're a great slave. Servant. Servant. Civil servant. You, you're, <laughs> that's what it really and honest truly comes down to because it's not something that you yourself is creating. Right. It's something you are signing up to help already exist. Right. So mm -hmm. you just you just become Contribute trained. To you even system. go through training to be trained what this is, how we do stuff. It's not you at full. Uh, right. That's why I differ from a lot of the officers. So how, how did you not get brainwashed? Like, what? I was at first initially, okay. but but my breaking came down. A lot of it uh, goes back to my, my father. My father was awoke, and mm. I didn't even know it. He was a minister, but he was awoke. Uh, and and, 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 book, and huh? being involved with the people he was Everything involved with uh, shows me that he was awoke. Um, even in, in dealing with my mom today and how my dad was, he passed away when I was 13. So at age 13, he taught me a lot of stuff creatively he would put it like tuck it into the simple stuff that he would say it wouldn't be strictly that but later on as i unravel it like yeah. oh i see where this makes sense and applies to life now mm -hmm. uh if that's how awoke he was with the stuff that he would do and he just was not bending or biting on any mm -hmm. unfair treatment of anybody for any reason right. i can remember me and daddy standing in the yard and this like really happened the, the ku klux klan used to have a parade that would go from downtown Na uh, uh, columbia back into pulaski right mm -hmm. well we stayed at literally it walked past our house and we were standing out in the yard and he was just watching he said before i be a slave i'll be dead and buried in my grave that's how real he was to not letting anything enslave him yeah. he only 57 he was 57 when he died he only worked nine years of his life nine years is what they have him documented and that was at his younger age 
uh, when he, he was, was working. Like a pastor full time. He, he was preaching and he was doing other stuff business wise just to make money wow. without being underneath someone's supervision so, or someone's uh, policies or procedures. How long did he preach? Um, <laughs> long time. Yeah, yeah. It, alone. Let me put it like this. Daddy, it was crazy, and I, and I didn't see it. It's the ignorance that kind of happened to me, because when you're actually living or you're in, around stuff, your normal is somebody's abnormal, but you don't notice it. Very so, true. like, Very true. people, would, because of his connection and stuff that he would do, uh, it can't nothing happen to him now because both of them are gone, but they would bring tickets or any illegal trouble that they got into to mm -hmm. my daddy, and daddy mm -hmm. would take it down to the courthouse and get it taken care of. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the connection and, and the about. the power and stuff that he actually had Hell to yeah. make stuff happen. But it wasn't more so from him doing stuff. It was because they knew he knew, mm -hmm. and they knew what he knew was dangerous. So it's either you make friends with the dangerous one, or you start a war. Uh, and sadly, I I, I have to admit, I, I believe my father just said, you know what, in this fight and seeing how ignorant people was and how it really was. People were really wasn't gonna fight the way that we needed to fight. Yeah. He said, "You know what? I'm just like more people do. I plug in and try to make my change the best way that I can uh, within it." Now, uh, but that's what kind of carved me from being that type of person. Of I'm always gonna do right by people. I don't care what offense that they did, they got them into custody or any of that stuff. Because when you look at a lot of stuff, you find out that people are who they are from their environment. Yes, not for they just chose to want to be bad mm -hmm. no they I, I talked to one of my uh offenders that i've seen on the outside and i asked him i said what's what's going on with you what happened in your life he was going to school at tsu and was doing stuff but then he told me well he said my mama got me hooked on crack his mama was a crackhead his daddy was an african and if you don't know anything about african africans know how to work like literally his daddy get, would always be on get a job just get a job so his daddy would work whatnot the mama was the downfall Mm. for him mm. first one to introduce him crack. to crack cocaine and then that took him from TSU, being in school with TSU school to, to, to being homeless and on the street and literally not having nothing better for him in life uh, wow. it's crazy how that woke me up to environments of, of people not wanting to not be good they just didn't have an avenue if my mama mm. hooked Dude. me up on something Man. how do you defeat that Right. Yeah, man. That's, right. that's, that's I come back to that you right now. That's it. Yes. And and so he was it's, it's kinda like whatever happened past that point was his setup for failure. He yeah. couldn't avoid it if he wanted to, unless somebody else just came along and the sad truth, they would have had to kill his mama, snatch him mm -hmm. away and expose mm -hmm. him to another environment of him not knowing or having any knowledge of her even existing. Yeah. That's how bad it was. So I, I just decided to say, you know what? Me knowing that it's that bad, I can't keep going at this same mindset that the system was telling me is that they're choosing to be bad. These people are bad because they choose to be bad. No, let me change the environment and watch better product come up out of it. That's right. when people talk about the crab in the barrel mentality. That, right. When crabs pull each other down. That's because the water's hot. Yeah. yeah. When you put them in, a, in, uh, in the ocean in a regular environment, they don't do that. Don't, right. right. So, nobody, nobody ever points that out. And that's that creativity that this, this system, a lot of people talk about system oppression, but they don't really look at how deep how this deep whole, psychologically that, that oppression yeah. is. Yes. I tell people a lot of times, poverty is not a, a it, yes, it's financial, but it's not so much financial as it is mentality. Right, mm -hmm. poverty because is Because there's some rich people in poverty. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in their poverty mindset is rich. They don't ever want to fall to a certain level, so they're going to do whatever it takes yes. to stay or gain. Meaning, if I got to throw you down underneath that bus to save me, they will. You get a prime example in, in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, they will do it. They'll do it in a heartbeat, but in in on the smallest level. Cause something that I, I'm figuring out in life is people will take whatever their occupation is, and it'll it'll be magnified. We can all be working at the junkyard, but if you want to be the the foreman or the the team mm -hmm. lead of the junkyard, it's everything to you now. Mm -hmm. So you'll you'll throw me under the bus, and even though it's, we just working at a junkyard together, yeah. I want that spot up there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it, and it plays out. And I, when you say it's psychological, I feel like that that is, uh, it's like a propaganda tool that keeps that, it that is. keeps that it, going. It's trying within your environment. And, and it, it, so it's like a lot of things that I wake, woke up to. A lot of people, I was an athlete. I played at Columbia Central High School. I was, I was good. I'm mm -hmm. not going to even lie. I'll tell you right now, I turned down the opportunity to go play in the NFL twice. Get the fuck. 
What? Now, the crazy thing what? is, is because it, <laughs> it actually became the thing of who you know, not how good you was. Mm. So, who you know can get you a lot of places. Yeah, but you yeah, don't yeah. really want that type of progression and then later on be able that come back to haunt you. Yeah. So, literally, if I, if I was crooked, I would have took it and ran, right? Mm. But you have to think down the line. Don't live for the day. Think about what's going to happen later on when this come out, how you really got here, where you really came from, and they start doing it, or you don't do what that the story is told. Right. Yeah. You don't do what they say do. How They, they, they yeah. got something on you. Don't mm. give them nothing. So, literally, I, I turned it down in thinking deeper than just in the you now. You didn't go for the instant gratification. No, you right? can't go for that because that's sometimes that's the my whole for generation, your bro. My whole that's, generation. Yeah. See, the, the thing of, to feed on what he said here, we have to learn how to be tomorrow people. Yeah. Mm. We can't be in the moment. Right. We need to be thinking about tomorrow and thinking about the future. But and, there's so much and, happening in the moment. But it's all it's so much happening, but you got you got to get your mind mentally mature enough to deal with life. Yeah. And see, I told all y'all that when y'all were getting ready to graduate from school, I was telling you stuff I wish people would have told me when I was 17, right. 18 years yeah. old. Sure. And I had people doing that. But the people that was doing that, I wasn't listening to them. Mm. I would listen to my teacher quicker than I would listen to my daddy. That yeah. was my folly. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Now I listen to my dad like he Albert Einstein. <laughs> I know he know more way more than I know. Right. And he's right. way smarter than I am. Right. See, but yeah. you did tell me the stuff that I need that I needed to hear. Like, I, I was 16, 17. I didn't really get it till I was like 21. But mm. the fact that I got it at 21 though. <laughs> like things that you know right. some people be in their forties and they have to learn from from right. the mistake. It would just be certain things you might say and I'll and I'll be seeing it happen and I'll be like, that's what he meant. I can dodge that whole thing. Like right. 'cause even cause sometimes you could see somebody's folly, you could see somebody's mess up, but you don't understand how to avoid it yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just see uh, everybody going off that cliff. I don't really know how to stop. This. Yeah, you, <laughs> so, you, you ain't you ain't supposed to see it. Yeah, right. right. And that, that's the thing, cause I, I I end up mentoring a lot of people, being a poet and being an artist. You end up crossing people that want to talk to you and need some help. Mm -hmm. And I have to let them know, don't blame yourself, because right. some stuff is creatively being done to you, and you don't notice it. Yeah. Yes. You're not awake to to, to notice every single thing. So the second yes. that you are sleep on it, it'll in, it'll influence you, and you won't know it influenced you because right. that's how marketing works. Mm -hmm. If you really want to learn how marketing works. Study it and show yeah. how they'll show you how an image flashes in front of you. You ain't finna do nothing right now with it, but later down the line, it's gonna it's gonna make right. an impact. And you'll never know. Subliminal. So, oh man. Yeah, subliminal. It, it, uh, so yeah. creatively, though. Oh yeah, that phone, all this stuff. It's really? people don't realize. I use social media for business purposes. It's for a the market. For me. For for me to be able to reach people <laughs> right. creatively because. They put that out there to do it to us. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. That's so, why it's out there. A lot of people don't realize, and really it's sad they don't realize it because they have openly put documents and statements out that they have practiced adjusting our moods, mm -hmm. adjusting where our focus oh, is. The yeah. article, they, they admit it. It's not even a secret no more. No. It's <laughs> like, hey, yeah, Facebook's like, hey, yeah, we targeted you with negative uh, mm -hmm. posts and negative uh, comments and stuff for six months just to follow. How you went. Yeah, how yeah. you reacted. You, I let me say this. I believe that during the uh, Obama administration, that that was an experiment to see how we reacted to fake news and how well we all took the, all that stuff. Yes, yeah, all that stuff was, yes. and, and yeah. it, it was yes. done intentionally to yes. to do what it done. I yeah. Always remember, okay, always remember that the Jim Jones CIA records are classified and they were not released. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> and that's it, man. We we could talk about this stuff for hours, but we have hit a two hour limit. Sure, <laughs> we had two right. hours. We, 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 we definitely have to do this again. Yeah, so we definitely much. need to. And for um, those listening, if you think you caught everything, I, I you just rewind. Right. You need to rewind that. <laughs> play that back. Yeah, play you that know what back. I'm saying? This is uh, very informative. A lot of information being thrown at you guys all at once. So. For real. I hope uh, you breathe through it. it. Breathe through yep. it. It's a lot. It's right. a lot. Research Don't go into panic mode because right. it's not to push or stress <laughs> you out, but it's just to give you a wake-up call 
And yeah. so you can readjust and really refocus. So. And I'm going to look up that King in the Wilderness, and uh, I'm going to look up Willie Somerset also. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Brown. This is our first time meeting. I went to Spring yes, Hill. All so, right. Yeah. All right. Um, Frizzy. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, everything. Right. We we are gonna have you guys back at some point in time. Both of you guys are so knowledgeable about things. Yeah. Uh, I think we should bring Frizzy back with James. Hell yeah! And I think we should bring Josh. Mr. Brown back Josh. with Josh. Yeah, with yes, yes. That's yeah. that's a that would be a great. Josh is a historian, you know, okay. political analyst. So, yeah, he, he's a good guy though. Okay, good okay. guy. Yeah, and um. James, he comes on and he does a segment about Legal law. Legal. He's an attorney. Wow. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. So, it'd be good to just talk about things. You know yeah. what I mean? Hey, James is a good guy. They're both great guys. They are. Uh, they wouldn't be uh, on cool the cast people. if they weren't. Yeah, we Understood. Hang out with cool Understood. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, thanks everybody for uh, tuning in. You know, we're at a two hour mark and it's time for us to uh, to blast off, you know, yeah. back in the outer space. Brandon, you got anything for him? Um, follow me on Instagram at Yeezy LaFlair. Uh, uh, like the um, the page. Put the the tattoo competition on your calendar. Right. And we're going to have on the Po' Boy, po, po, po Boy Poets. Yeah, we're going to bring them yes. on down. Yes. Please come back. Yes, I, need, I have probably two or three more time slots that I need to fill. Yes. So, and we've got some great people got a that, that wants to, yeah. Do you? Okay. Yep. So, we've got, you know, we've got a fire dancer. We've got a guy that's going to do a glass blowing display. Damian Boggs is going to come perform. Uh, Short, Short and Low. Low. Hey, what's up? Y'all was Shout out there out. with us. Okay. I appreciate the love, Short and Low. And, um, and hopefully you guys and put yeah. the pole boys and poets down. We're going to give it you happen. an hour. Can't, y'all got happen. an hour for us? Man, we got we got three three days for you. Three days. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So um let's uh before we go, let's pass around uh Tata Tata Hannes. Uh -huh, Tata Hannes. Right. Everybody rub Tata, Tata Hannes for good luck. Yeah. Oh, Tata oh, Tata, okay. Tata Hannes. Yeah. Tata Hannes. <laughs> y'all didn't see him rubbing Tata Hannes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, How can they get in contact with you on yes. social media? Follow really me cool. on Instagram, Frizzy222, just like the hair being Frizzy, F R I Z Z Y, and 222. Okay. Right. What if Po, Bo, uh, po, po Boys and Poets? Uh, you can follow that on Instagram as well. It's P B N P Nash, and it's just a, it's Po Boys and Poets Nashville is what it actually is broken down for. So P B N P Nash, you'll find, of course, the events yeah. that we do there. Frizzy Productions is actually my sole proprietor. Uh, marketing and promotion business, so a lot of stuff marketing goes through Frizzy Productions. Just plug in, so either Frizzy Productions, Frizzy Two Two Two, or Po Boys and Poets Nashville. You can find us. Okay, nice. Mr. Right. Brown, if they want to reach you, hey, I'm on Facebook. Your Facebook, because okay. he does uh, the the MLK, um, JFK, Mink Slide. Yeah. Also, like. also, uh, let me should throw out this uh, November twenty second, two thousand nineteen, the Columbia Central High School uh, Criminal Justice Two class will be doing a presentation. Oh, nice! And it's going to be uh, JFK fifty plus six. It will be in the auditorium at seven p.m. Maybe we should show mm -hmm. up. Yeah, show up and yeah. broadcast a little bit. Kids, All right. kids yeah, get on to some stuff, and when they start investigating. It, I catch me two or three every year. They won't leave it alone. Yeah. Right. Mm. right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is the students actually like the students researching this. Yeah. Ooh. All I'm right. Now. Yeah. This good. And a high school. All right. Well, gentlemen, <laughs> we really appreciate y'all. Uh, man, it's so much. This was just dope. Yeah. But um, we're gonna time, sign man. out. I hope everybody has has a blessed week. Hey, love each other. Um, rest in peace to my my dear friend Dre Hidalgo. I love you, bro. Uh, just love each other. Be grateful for the time that we got. Y'all have a good one. Who that? Who that? You're now rocking with DJ. Who that? Who that? There's nothing around. It's gotta be my imagination. I think it's in the face. I think it's in the face. I think it's in the face. There's nothing around. Let's go. Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that?